all. I now call this meeting of the Committee on Agriculture, Food, and Agrarian Reform jointly with the Committee on Ways and Means and Finance in order. In order. Okay. Uh, I wish to acknowledge the senators present. Are there senators present? Uh, Senator Amy, ma'am. Oh, I wish to acknowledge the presence of Senator Amy Marcos. Thank you for coming. And uh, let me call the committee secretary, Attorney Philip Lina, to acknowledge the presence of our guests. Attorney Lina. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Madam Chair. The following are now in attendance in our in our in today's public hearing. Dr. William, Dr. William Medrano from the DA, the Undersecretary for Livestock. Mm -hmm. Yusik Mercedita Sumbilia from the NEDA, the regional uh, the head of the regional development group in the office. Morning, Paul. Uh, Ms. Nevat Natural from also from the A uh, from Neda, Jillian Aipa. Good morning, Mr. Paul. John, Kenneth Casabal and Mr. Adriano. Good morning. From the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, uh, Dr. Yelano Briones and Dr. Sonny Domingo, both research, uh, senior research fellows. Mm -hmm. Good morning. From the Philippine Statistics Authority, Dr. Divina Gracia del Prado. Morning, Paul. Ms. Mar Ms. Marisol Faliarme, Ms. Good Precious morning, Jacinto, morning, and Ms. Manuela Analugon, and Ms. Elena Barona. From the Department of Science and Technology, uh, Mr. John Paolo Jose. From Good morning, Paul. From TESDA, Attorney Leoford Pascual and Ms. Beverly Bayonisto. From, from the Department of Trade and Industry, Assistant Director Emma Asosano, Ms. Susan Salonga, Ms. Maricor Banaga. From the Bureau of Customs, uh, Attorney Karen Anyambao uh, from the Legal Morning. Service of Customs. From uh, the Department of Finance, we have Lionel Tan Tanganko. From the Bureau of Treasury, Mr. Dominic Pariano and Ms. Marcia Sumagaisay. From the Department of Justice, Attorney Ulysses, uh, Ulysses Aguila. Good morning, Pa. Good morning. <clears throat> From the Department of Transportation, uh, Ms. Sheila Napalang. Magandang umaga po. Morning. From the Cooperative Development Authority, Deputy Administrator Ray Ilivazo. Morning, ma'am. Good morning. From uh, the Tariff Commission, uh, we have Commissioner Marisa Maricosa Paderon. Miss Diana Hope M. Castro from also from Tariff Commission. Uh, Mr. Rayleigh Nuhen Flores also from Tariff Commission. And uh, from the Philippine Crop Insurance Corporation, Attorney Jovi Bernabe. Oh, no, no. Uh, his representative, Romeo Salting. Morning, Paul. From Morning. the Philippine National Police, uh, Philippine Major, uh, Police Major Jesse Soriano. Uh, sir, good morning. Uh, may we request to please accept our principal, sir, Police Brigadier General Noblesa, sir. Okay, okay. We will do that later. After In the waiting room, names. sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bata From the Office for Competition, um, the director herself, Attorney Pichi and Apollo Imperio, with Maria Alilig Herman. And from the Philippine Competition Commission, Attorney Ramon Heriel Sawit. Morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Then from uh, the National Anti-Poverty Commission, Mr. Ronald Ronaldo Mateo. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> from the Department of Agriculture, uh, 
Bantay Presyo Task Force, Mr. Federico Lasiste Jr. Morning po. Morning. Uh, Assistant Secretary Designate for Regulation of the Department of Agriculture, Dr. Lisa Batan. Good morning po. Good morning. Assistant Secretary for Administration, Department of Agriculture, Attorney Jane Bacayo. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, National Dairy Authority, uh, OIC Administrator, Dr. Farrell Benhilix Flores Magtoto. Good, mor good morning po sa lahat. With Ms. Shane Sumagaysay. Uh, Good morning, from the Philippine Carabao Center, Dr. Ronnie Domingo. Madam Chair, magandang umaga po. Good morning. From the National, from the National and Meat Inspection Service, Dr. Jocelyn Salvador. And from the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research, Dr. Janelle Soriano. Good morning po, Madam Chair. Good morning po. Good morning. Good morning. From the Agribusiness and Marketing Assistance Service, AMAS, Mr. Elmer Rio Florido Esplana. Good morning, po, Madam. Good morning. From the Agricultural Training Institute, Ms. Antonieta Arceo. Morning, po. Good morning. <coughs> uh, from the National Corn Program, Director Milo de los Reyes. Morning, po, Ma'am. Good morning. From the Philippine Veterani Drug Association, uh, Mr. Philip Jose Tupas, the President. Gandang umaga po. Thank you for having us. Gandang umaga. From the National Livestock Program, the Director, uh, Dr. Ruth Miklat Sonaco. Good morning po, Attorney Philip. Good morning po, Madam Senator. Good morning. Uh, from the Agro... From the National Feed Resources Research and Development Center of the DA, Jessica Largado. Hi. Good morning po. And Mr. Johnny Monforte. From the Bureau of Agric Agriculture and Fisheries Standards, Dr. Alpha Lanuza. Hello po. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning Good everyone. morning. Good morning. From the Animal and Dairy Sciences Cluster of the University of of the Philippines, Los Banos, Director Romel Solabo. Magandang umaga po. Good morning, uh, Mr. Senator. Good morning. From the League of Provinces, uh, represented by Ms. Angelica J. Sanchez. The Provincial Veterinarian of the Quezon Province, Dr. Flamelia Cagicla. Good morning po. Good morning. From the Philippine Veterinary Drug Association, Dr. Eugenio Mende. Good morning. Good morning. And, and Director Corazon Occidental, also uh, the President of the Philippine Veterinary Medical Association. Corazon Occidental, also uh, the President of the Philippine Veterinary Medical Association. Good morning po, Madam Chair, Attorney Lina. Good morning po. Good morning, good morning. From the Philippine College of Veterinary Public Health, uh, President... Dr. Edna Sinaida Villacorte. Good morning, Honorable Senator and Attorney Lina. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the chairperson uh, on the Revenue Oversight Committee of the Sorosoro Ibaba Development Cooperative, Director Alberto Borog. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat, Livestock Division. No? Magandang umaga. Uh, the Agriculture Sector Alliance of the Philippines, represented by Ms. Rufina Salas. Okay. Uh, the President of the Manila Meat Dealers Association, Ricardo Xan. Dealers Association, Ricardo Xan. Good morning. National Federation of Hog Farmers, Incorporated, Mr. Alfred Nang. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. From the Real Fresh Dairy Farms Incorporated, Ms. Katarin Pia Arroyo and Mr. Mark Angelo Borja. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, po. Good morning. Good morning. From the Laban Consumer, Mr. Joe Rianio. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. 
Good morning, Mr. Ranyo. <laughs> good morning din po, ma'am. Good morning sa lahat. Ating siya sa DA. Last, last, ano, Yusek ng DA. Last time. Opo, ma'am. Uh, Chairman and Founder of the Philippine Coalition of Consumer Welfare, Mr. Ricardo Samaniego. Good morning, Madam Chair, Cynthia Aguilar Pillar, and the Senators, Attorney Lina. Uh, good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. From the SM Super Malls, Ms. Helen Go and Ms. Maria Tala Exconde. Good morning, Madam Chair and everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Danilo Ramos from the Kilosang Magbubukid ng Pilipinas. Magandang umaga po, Senator Villar. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Good morning. Uh, from the Native Animals Farmers Agriculture Cooperative, Ms. Robina Crescencio. Good morning, Madam Senator. Good morning. And uh, the President of Samahang Industriya ng Agrikultura, si Nag, Mr. Uh, Engineer Rosendo So. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Madam. Good morning, Sendo. Thank you for coming. We wish to acknowledge the presence of Senator Kiko Palangilinan, one of the authors of the bills we will discuss today. Okay, Senator Pangilinan. Thank you for coming. Good morning, Ma'am. Okay. Good morning, Senator Cynthia. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Madam Chair, those, those are the names present at at the moment, if you would allow me later, I can call the names of those who will arrive later. Okay. Thank Today you. we Thank are you. set to address the issues that beset the livestock industry. There are five Senate bills that were filed covering this topic. The bills are Senate Bill 139 by myself and Senator Nancy Binay, which is an act to restructure and rationalize the livestock industry in order to strengthen its development, protection, and regulatory functions, including the promotion of dairy and native animals, and to provide a livestock development fund and for other purposes. Number two is Senate Bill Number 821 by Senator Sani Angara, an act promoting the scientific propagation, processing, utilization, and development of Philippine native animals, hereby creating the Philippine Native Animal Development Center. Number three is Senate Bill 1048 by Senator Ralph Recto, an act providing for direct financial assistance to backyard livestock raisers affected by major animal disease epidemic or transboundary na animal diseases amending for the purpose Republic Act number 1578 and for other purposes. Number four, Senate Bill 1297 by Senator Lapid, an act establishing a diagnostic laboratory for livestock-related diseases in every province where the livestock industry is a major economic activity, appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes. And the last one, Senate Bill number 2176 by Senator Kiko Pangilinan, an act to support the strengthening of the local swine industry, creating for the purpose the Swine Competitiveness Enhancement Fund, further amending Republic Act number 8178 as amended and for other purposes. The committee will make a brief presentation of the livestock, poultry, dairy, and the corn industry. So we will ask our COMSEC to make the presentation. Madam Chair, um, may, may I call on the NEDA to, to make the presentation? Okay. Thank you. Uh, good morning to everyone. Good morning, Senator Villar, and good morning to all the senators present here, and of course, to all the members of the, uh, to all the participants in this uh, uh, committee meeting. Yes, uh, we are going to be uh, presenting, uh, you know, a background of supposedly the uh, 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 provisions of a proposed livestock, poultry, dairy, and corn development law, which is based on a study which was led by the PIDS, and they are represented here by Dr. Uh, Ruel Brionist and Sani, I think. And uh, it, uh, the study was really a comparison. We really made a comparison between 
the competitiveness of Philippine livestock, poultry, dairy, and corn industry in the Philippines with those of the ASEAN countries. So it's on basis of this study that, you know, we are, uh, we identified some provisions that could so, really go to the, you know, to the so we come up with the law. So without further ado, Madam Chair, and um, who is talking ba? Excuse me. You oh, who is talking? <laughs> Who's talking ba? <laughs> okay. Senator, I was the one I was the one talking a while ago, but there was a noise at the background. Yeah, yeah, that's why I am asking who is talking ba <laughs> somewhere uh, at the background. Yeah. Okay. So Senator, just to you know uh, continue without further ado, I would like to ask uh Dr. Carlo Adriano to make the presentation. This is already a joint presentation of the uh, uh, background for why we need to have these provisions in the law, which was done by PIDS uh, and together with Sharka for the for the regional um, uh, competitiveness study of other Asian countries. So, Carlo, uh, will you be presenting, sharing your uh, PowerPoint presentations? Yes, you said. Uh, good okay, morning, everyone. Good morning, Senator uh, Villar, Senator Aimee, Senator Pangilinan, and everyone. Uh, I'll share my screen now. So I will be presenting the Livestock Development and Competitiveness, or LDC Law, uh, Proposed Livestock, Poultry, Dairy, and Corn Development and Competitiveness Law. So the outline of the presentation is first we will present what is the problem, and the problem is high price of livestock, poultry, and dairy, or LPD, products contributing to high rates of, of malnutrition. Number two, what are the causes of the problem? And we identified three, course, three causes, high cost of production, particular corn, unorganized and backward small-scale operation, and number three, fragmented government support structure. And the last one, we will present what is the proposed solution to the problem, which is the enactment of the LDC law. So again, the problem, high price of LPD products. Now, Filipinos are paying more than double for pork compared to Thailand and 73% more compared to Vietnam. Now, this show, the figure shows you the retail price of pork for US, US, Thailand, China, Vietnam, and Philippines, all in pesos per kilogram. And as you can see here in 2018, the, the retail price of pork, pork in the Philippines is around 44 pesos higher than in, in Vietnam. And in 2019, Philippine retail price of pork is around 80 pesos higher than compared to Thailand. Filipinos are also paying more than double for chicken compared to Thailand and around 44% compared to Vietnam. The, this figure shows you the little price of chicken meat, uh, all in pesos per kilogram for Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, and China. And as you can see here in 2019, the little price of chicken meat is 85 pesos higher than than in Thailand. And in 2020, Philippine retail price of chicken meat is around 37 pesos higher than in Vietnam. Now in 2021, inflation was driven by food and this in turn is driven by high meat inflation. This figure shows you inflation rates for uh, food and meat. As you can see here in Q4, at around Q4 of 2020, meat posted double digit inflation rates. Now, high meat prices lead to protein deficiency as most protein come from pork and chicken. And this is projected to grow over time. Now, the figure on your left shows you the 2019 distribution of protein consumption among Filipinos. And as you can see here, the share of poultry and pork is around 52%. And this is projected to grow to around 50, 58% in 2030, as you can see in the figure on your right. Ms. Ma Madam Chair, yes, there is a there is a uh, uh, question in the chat box about not they're not being able to see the slides. Can I check again if all the participants are seeing the the slides? I'm seeing it. <laughs> I don't know about the others. Anyway, uh, maybe yeah. you can uh, they can tell you who cannot see and maybe you can distribute a hard copy of your presentation. Yes, I already I would like also a hard copy of the presentation. <laughs> oh. We already sent a copy of the PowerPoint, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, 
Carlos, sorry oh, about that. Okay, thank you. thank you. Okay, next slide. Among children, protein deficiency increases with age, and high schoolers consume only half of the needed protein. The figure on the figure shows you the prevalence of inadequate protein intake by age group. And as you can see here, the older the age group, the higher the prevalence of inadequate protein intake. Wherein for the 13 to 18 years old, the inadequacy is at 47%. Now, this may pose a problem because this age group it will soon be part of your labor force and this inadequate protein intake may have negative implications to their productivity. Now, this one, students from countries with higher pork and chicken prices tend to have lower test scores, which is uh, measured by PISA or the Program for International Student Assessment. Now, the figure on your left shows you the relationship between PISA scores and pork prices where in the higher the pork prices, you tend to have lower PISA scores. Now, the figure on the right shows you the relationship between PISA score and chicken prices. Same story, the higher the chicken prices, you tend to have lower PISA scores. Now, what are the causes of the problem? Again, we identified three. High cost of production, in particular corn, unorganized and backward small-scale operation, and fragmented government support structure. So let's start with the high cost of production, in particular corn. The Philippines has the highest cost of production, and it's driven by corn. The figure on your left shows you the cost of large... Can I have a question there uh, with this regard to, with corn? Because I went to Thailand, and I saw uh, a model wherein... Uh, they don't use corn for feeding the livestock. They use a uh, uh, vegetable, high protein vegetable planted uh, in the same place. They have a model there. So I was thinking, why do we have to be uh, dependent on corn? Can we not we not teach our people to be able to 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 grow this high protein? Uh, 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 vegetable which can be eaten by our livestock since many of our livestock farmer are backyard farmers can you answer that question why why we have to be dependent on corn uh yes madam uh, i'm i i'm not yet sure about this uh this vegetable uh, um, no, I saw it in thailand uh, yes i'm not I, I'm model not model uh, uh, cattle farm there and I was so impressed because half of the area they planted to high protein vegetable and then they use they don't buy. They use that to feed their cattle. And then after that, they have a, a processing facility. And after that, they have a, a restaurant and a, and a store wherein they sell their products. So I was thinking... Uh, uh, why we are not promoting that in the Philippines when I, I saw it in Thailand. Yes, Madam Senator, I'll look into this uh, substitute, okay. this vegetable substitute, and we'll update you on what we can actually do uh, here in the Philippines. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Thank Madam you, Chair. Madam. Madam Chairperson, just very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes uh, Senator Pangilinan. Yes, uh, clearly uh, the biggest uh, portion of producing our our uh, livestock is uh, feeds uh, ang, ang biro nga ma'am uh, wag kang magpa wag kang magtayo ng uh, babuyan uh, pumasok ka na lang sa negosyo ng feeds kasi doon kikita ka uh, yun ang dapat baguhin uh, dahil uh, mas kumikita yung mga nagbebenta ng feeds at uh, yung mayaman kesa sa yung mga magbababoy na maliliit uh, and this is really a challenge. That's why I'm asking substitute for yes. corn, di ba? Oo. Kasi I saw it in Thailand and I was so impressed that they don't buy uh, feeds. They grow their feeds. And uh, they're teaching me. I, I studied that and I'm doing a, a, a what do you call this, a dairy farm. And I, I'm, I'm planting these high protein vegetables. Uh, and to to feed so I to feed my carabao so I don't have to buy feeds because mm -hmm. I don't want to subsidize their feeds. 
Okay, so that's what I'm asking them. If we have a substitute for corn, uh, it's all right if we can afford to buy corn. But for those who are so poor, our, our farmers who are so poor, maybe they have a, an alternative so that uh, we can still grow and not uh, be dependent on corn. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pangilinan. Are you, you want to say something, uh, Mrs. Ombilia? Yes, ma'am. I just, you know, would want to uh, reiterate what uh, Carlos said, that we will look into this, you uh -huh. know, the, one that, the model that you have been, you know, that you have mentioned. So we'll, we'll, we'll look into this and we'll try to see how we could incorporate provisions yeah. of that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Senator Pangilinan. Uh, so the figure on your left shows you the cost of large-scale swine farms in pesos per kilogram and as you, for China, Vietnam, Thailand, and Philippines. And as you can see here, the Philippines is the highest cost producer at 112 pesos per kilogram. And this is around 18 pesos higher than in Vietnam. And as you can see here, the main cost component in the production of swine is actually feed cost, wherein its share is around 60%. Now, the figure on the right shows you the cost of large-scale broiler farms, again, in pesos per kilogram for China, Vietnam, Thailand, and Philippines. And same story, the Philippines is the highest cost producer for broiler at 92 pesos per kilogram, and this is around 25 pesos higher than in Thailand. Similarly, the main cost component in the production of broiler is feed cost, wherein its share is around 65%. Now, yellow corn is the main component of animal feed production and is the main driver of livestock and poultry prices. Now, the figure on your left shows you the share of corn to animal feed production cost, and it's at, on average, it's at 60%. Now, the table on your right shows you the price effect of corn on animal feed and livestock and poultry, wherein, as you can see here, a one peso increase per, kilo, per kilogram in the price of yellow corn will increase animal feed prices per kilogram by 0.55 centavos, which translate to an increase in uh, the live cost of uh, livestock and poultry per kilogram by 0.84 centavos. Unfortunately, Philipp Philippine wholesale corn price is 73% higher than Thailand in 2019. This figure shows you the wholesale prices of corn in pesos per kilogram for the Philippines, China, Thailand, and Vietnam. And as you can see here in 2019, uh, Philippine yellow corn price is at 20 pesos per kilogram compared that to, to Thailand, it's only at 12 pesos per kilogram. So around eight, pes eight pesos higher. Now, if corn were as cheap in Thailand, pork and chicken prices would fall by 15 and 36 pesos, respectively. Now, this figure shows you the average pork and chicken retail prices. In 2021, the average uh, price of pork is at 276 pesos per kilogram. Now, if corn were as cheap in Thailand, it will go down to 234 pesos per kilogram or 42 pesos decrease. Similarly, the average price of chicken in 2021 is around 180 pesos per kilogram. Now, again, if corn were as cheap as in Thailand, it will go down to 145 pesos or a 35 pesos decrease. Now, second uh, cause of the problem is the unorganized and backward small-scale operation. As we all know, the swine industry was hit hard by the African swine fever. And one of the contributing factors is the dominance of backyard production for swine, wherein its share is around 66%. Now, why is this a problem? Because many backyard producers do not have the technology and investment, and some of them use swill feeding to decrease feed costs. Now, the problem with swill feeding is that it exacerbated the spread of ASF, and that's why actu DA actually banned the use of swill feeding. Meanwhile, the poultry industry is also vulnerable, vulnerable because backyard producers account for around 45% of the total production. Now, the third cause is the fragmented government support structure. Now, we we'll list down here the LTD support agency. So we have the Corn Program, the National Meat Inspection Service. We have the Philippine Carabao Center, National Dairy Authority, the Bureau of Animal Industry, and the Livestock Program. 
Now, these various agencies implement different policies and regulations that are sometimes conflicting and overlapping with each other, and this contributes to the uncompetitiveness of the LPD and the corn sector. Now, third, what is the proposed solution, the enactment of the LDC law? Now, what is this LDC law, or the Livestock Development and Competitiveness Law? The LDC takes a holistic value chain approach, which aims to, one, promote the development and competitiveness of the local LPD and corn industry, to improve availability and affordability of nutritious and safe LPD products for 110 million Filipinos who spend about 9% of their total household budget on LPD products, three, better government response to pests and diseases, and four, increased income of LPD and corn farmers. Now, what are the key provisions of the LDC. There are six main provisions. Key provision well, number one is the rationalization of LPD support agencies into two agencies, namely the Philippine Livestock and Poultry Authority, which will have the developmental functions. And the other one is the Bureau of Animal Safety and Regulation, which will have the regu regulatory functions. Now we separated the developmental and regulatory so that there will be no conflict of, to avoid conflict of interest. Number two, uh, formulation of the Philippine Livestock, Poultry, and Dairy Value Chain Development Roadmap. So it's again, it's a value chain approach. Number three, tariff revenues for livestock, poultry, and dairy will be earmarked for LPD productivity improvement. There will be a LPD competitiveness and enhancement fund similar to RCEF, which will have a 6.3 billion pesos fund. Number four, tariff revenues for corn and feed wheat. And, is, uh, can I ask a question? Yes, Madam Senator. Uh, that 6.3 billion, where will it come from? Uh, from the import, from the tariff revenues of yeah. the So of what chicken. kind of tariff will produce 6.3 billion for us? The current tariff rate, ma'am. We did what? not change anything. It uh, is so current, this, this is the average collection from 2015 to 2020. Uh, so can you business. give me a report on the tariff rate na yes. will result to 6.3 billion a year? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma Thank you. Okay, go ahead. The fourth key provision is the tariff revenues for corn and feed wheat earmarked for pro corn productivity improvement. So we will also have the Corn Competitive Enhancement Fund, which will have a 2.8 billion pesos fund. Fifth key provision, exemption from taxes and duties of LPD farm inputs. Wala doon yung ano, wala dito yung ano, yung ah, ito, tariff revenues. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Exemption from taxes and duties of LPD farm inputs, veterinary and other supplies, equipment, machineries, breeders. And sixth key provision is there can be an activation of the Animal and Livestock Emergency Response Task Force or Alert F during pests and diseases related emergencies. Now, much like the RTL, the proposed LDC law is a game changer because it is both pro consumer and pro farmer. Now, why is it pro consumer? If accompanied by lower tariffs, Filipino consumers will enjoy lower prices. The poor will save around 35% from monthly LPD expenditure. Now, this figure shows you the potential monthly income savings due to the LDC law. Now, the blue bar shows you the average, expen average monthly expenditure of the bottom 30th percentile or the poorest of the poor Filipino households. The average expenditure on LPD is around 356 pesos a month. And with an enactment of LDC law, this will go down to 231 pesos, which translates of around 125 pesos savings monthly for our bottom 30th percentile. Now, on average, for all, for all Philippine households, they spend around 913 pesos on LPD products monthly. And with an enactment of the LDC law, this will go down to 640 pesos, which translates to around 274 pesos monthly savings. Now, it is also pro-farmer because there's a holistic value chain approach to the development of LPD to improve income of farmers. First, again, as mentioned earlier, there will be a rationalization of LPD support agencies. Number two, 
there is a separation of developmental and regulatory power of LPD support agencies, leading to streamlined government interventions or policies throughout the chain from the upstream to the downstream. Now, it is also pro-farmer because there's an additional 9 billion pesos for the livestock, poultry, dairy, and corn farmers. Now, this figure shows you, uh, the, the yellow bar shows you the current corn budget is at an average is around 2.2 billion pesos from 2015 to 2020. But with an enactment of the LDC law, this will increase to 5 billion pesos or a 2.8 billion pesos increase. Similarly, the blue bar shows you the average annual budget for the livestock, poultry, and dairy, and it's at around 3.6 billion pesos. And with an enactment of LDC law, this will increase to 9.9 .9 billion pesos or a 6.3 billion pesos increase. Now, experience from RTL shows that this reform, together with a lowering of tariff rates on corn, livestock, and poultry, to probably an executive action can also work. Now, this figure shows you the contribution to inflation of rice and meat. And as you can see here, pre-RTL period, the main contributor to inflation was rice. Now, after the enactment of the RTL, the contribution of rice to inflation was negative or zero. Now, as we all know, in starting Q4 of 2020, the main contributor to inflation is meat inflation, wherein at its peak, its percentage contribution to inflation is at 1.5 percentage points. And with an enactment of the LDC law, we can lower this meat inflation. Now, aside from helping reduce prices for consumers, RTL and RCEF achieved three major goals for our Filipino farmers. Now, in terms of overall rice production, pre-RTL, we were at 11.9 million metric tons. After RTL and RCEF, we're now producing 12.5 million metric tons. So that's a 5% increase. In terms of efficiency or yield in metric tons per hectare, pre-RTL, it was 3.6 metric tons per hectare. Now with RTL and RCEF, it's now at 4 metric tons per hectare or a 10% increase. In terms of production costs in pesos per kilogram, pre-RTL, it's 13 pesos per kilogram. Now with RTL and RCEF, it's 11.5 pesos per kilogram or 11% decrease in production costs. Now with higher yield and lower production costs due to RTL and RCEF, rice farmers, according to the DA, get an additional 7,000 pesos per hectare of income. And with an enactment of the LDC law, we can do the same for our livestock, poultry, dairy, and corn farmers. Thank you. That ends my presentation. Okay. Um, thank you very much for that very good presentation. Uh, I would now call on uh, the, our honorable uh, senators present to make their comments. Uh, may we call on Senator Pangilinan? Okay. Um, I, I just have a quick question. Perhaps uh, Neda can assist us here. Uh, would you have data regarding... Uh, incomes of our uh, pig farmers uh, and our uh, carabao farmers uh, meron ba tayong data relative to rice farmers uh, is this disaggregated or uh, uh, hindi natin ma-determine because uh, i ask that because because uh, you your part of the strategy precisely is to increase their incomes but uh, uh, do we have the data uh, I the think they have, except okay. that they did not make a detailed presentation. Can we ask now the the one who presented? Uh, I think PIDS. Yes, at least dun sa ano, ma'am, dun sa sinasabi nilang small uh, backyard farmers. Farm. Yeah, because they are the majority, and they are our concern because the the corporate farms they take care of themselves. They they know how to take care of themselves. We are very concerned about the backyard farmers because yes. uh, we know that they cannot take care of themselves. Okay, so yes. may we have a comment on that? Thank you. Uh, my my concern, ma'am, is uh, maganda, no? Yung sinasabi lang bababa ang presyo, uh, magiging mas mura, etc. Yung production, etc. Maganda lahat yan. Pero uh, ano yung dagdag nakita 
Sabi nyo, 7,000 farmer pesos ang kinita additional ng mga rice farmers. So, unang-una, ano nga ba ang kinikita ng small uh, uh, backyard farms na magbababoy uh, para pagkatapos itong batas, malalaman natin uh, dumagdag ba yung kita nila o hindi? Do you have it or you you have? Do you have it now? Can you present it now? PIDS or NEDA? Uh, <clears throat> good morning. So, um, unfortunately, we we don't have that uh, specific calculation uh, for uh, income of backyard farmers. Uh, I I can imagine that uh, we can uh, try to crunch those numbers from available uh, government data, such as the Family Income and Expenditure Survey. Just uh, clarification, we may not be able to isolate the backyard growers, unfortunately, but I suspect that we can at least uh, derive the income of uh, um, uh, livestock farmers uh, from, from that data set. Thank you. Yes, um, and maybe we should review you know, the, the, the whole approach to uh, you know, getting data, lalo na when it comes to incomes, uh, because that's the gut issue. Uh, what's the point of all the interventions if we don't know in the end whether they're earning more or not? And we cannot know whether they're earning more or not if we don't know what they're earning to begin with. Hindi uh, uh, So, uh, and, and that has been, I think, historically the, the, the challenge to the agriculture sector. We're always focused on yields, we're focused on lowering cost of production, and yet we don't measure precisely what benefit it is, lalo na sa mga napakarami natin naghihirap na mga magsasaka, manging isda. So maybe... But, uh, they have that figure in the in corn, uh, rather in coconut and rice. Yes. Before, they have, it's 4,500 sa rice a month and uh, 1,500 sa coconut. But I haven't heard of uh, uh, the income for backyard uh, uh, livestock farmers and backyard uh, poultry raisers and backyard uh, uh, dairy farmers because uh, that's our problem. We have neglected the livestock industry until ASF came in. You know, when I wrote, uh, uh, when I passed bills on agriculture, I, I started with rice and then uh, coconut and then a portion of fishery and sugar. But uh, the, the livestock farmer is, I, I did not think of it until ASF came. <laughs> Kasi alam mo yung livestock farmers, ang livestock industry parang private sector led. Oh, even the small backyard farmers, may malalaking uh, ano, cooperative na managing them. Like for example, soro-soro ibaba sa, sa Batangas. Ano. So parang hindi natin naintindihan, tapos hindi pa silang makomplain. <laughs> ba? Oh, eh, yung mga rice, mga coconut, uh, mga sugar, maraming complaint. So sila nauna. So now we... Uh, uh, binabawi natin so we are really studying how to help the livestock farmers because of the hardship they experience because of ASF and then we realize na hindi pala nakokontrol yung diseases on the port hindi nagagawa yung ano yung yung pagkontrol ng ng importation of uh, pork na that will uh, cost diseases, huh? di ba? Kaya medyo nag nagkulang rin tayo. Kaya siguro uh, with your with your comment na we should start uh, finding out what is really I haven't heard of a figure na ganito ang kita ng livestock farmer per month. Nakarinig ako about coconut, about rice, about ano pero never the livestock farmer. So maybe uh, we can ask PIDS uh we can ask uh, DOF to finance a study na mas detailed about the ano the 
the livestock farmers. But maybe they, we can they, they give us an idea because I don't think we can wait for a study. Alam mo, kaya na-delay itong livestock bill eh. Nagpa-study pa kami kasi walang study. <laughs> walang study about livestock. So in in July of last year, I asked the Department of Finance to make a study kasi we were uh, trying to write a bill. Walang basis para to write a bill. Kaya nga ginawa nila yung study na yan and it took them six months to finalize the study. So ito yung study na yon. Ngayon, meron pang tanong si Senator Pangilina na kulang pa. But maybe they can do something out of other figures that we can find because we cannot wait for another study because that is another six months. Oh, oh. So we have to help the livestock farmer already. Yes. Just, just a follow-up, um, Madam Chairperson. Um, maybe also PSA can can explain to us uh, what are the efforts precisely to zero in on on uh, determining the incomes? Uh, Ma'am, uh, nabanggit po ninyo yung coconut farmers. Tama po yun, pero... Ang napansin natin, if you will recall, meron ding ibang data na nilalabas yung PCA, iba naman yung data na nilalabas nung uh, uh, PSA. Uh, so, uh, misan self-serving din kasi performance nila yan. Pagpangit ang data, then they, they will be responsible because they are the agency responsible for that. Kaya... Medyo, kaya gusto ko nga independent study para hindi siya ano, mas, mas tama. Diba? Like PIDS, ano naman ang concern nila na pagandahin yung study kung pangit. Diba? Hindi naman sila ang people responsible. Oo. And if I may say ma'am, just to place this on record, even if I sound like a broken record, uh, I've been to Thailand, I've been also to China, I've been to Vietnam, I've discussed these issues with their government uh, ministry, and all of them have benchmark incomes uh, mm-hmm. in terms of anong kinikita ng magsasaka at paano papataasin pa ang kita ng magsasaka. Uh, uh, I, I, re- I recall sa China, sabi ng ministry, 1979, the average income of our farmers was 160 yuan a month. Today, it's about almost 7,000 yuan a month. So, mm-hmm. doon mo makikita na meron palang tamang ginagawa dahil na may measure. Eh sa atin, uh, nauuwi sa output rather than outcome. Ibig sabihin, ginawa natin ito, number of hectares irrigated, number of hectares uh, replanted, number of hectares uh, fertilized. Uh, ano nangyari sa kita ng farmer? Uh, hindi po namin alam. <laughs> so, parang, so yun ho, ano, maybe, maybe Mr. Briones, uh, ma'am, with, with your permission, can answer, how do we uh, you know, pull the bull by its horns and get the data na ito ang kinikita ng, uh, ng uh, uh, magbababoy on average ngayon. At, uh, of course, hindi na nga natin mahihintay yan, pero moving forward, dapat naman siguro. Uh, mag- Para makita natin what change with our law so that uh you know there is a limit to the law so like for example uh, the rice competitiveness fa- enhancement fund will end in 20 20- 2024 so if we amend it then we will know what to do diba pag, pag sa amendment if we have a basis diba yes yes uh madam chair and yes uh, uh, um, yes mr bironis Yes. Yes, what we do have from our study itself, kasi baka mahirap lang hulaan because naka by kilo. Mm-hmm. But those by kilo estimates actually come from actual farm estimates for mm-hmm. third and commercial scale. So we can easily derive those figures not only for Philippines, but also for uh, other countries. Uh, so we can, oh. we can compare. We can compare. So, uh, unfortunately, that's one snapshot in time. <clears throat> so, in question to Senator Kiko uh, about time series, I think that needs to be uh, uh, addressed to PSA and perhaps yeah. Neda can, can take it up. Thank you. Maybe Neda can, ano, ma'am, uh, si Director Sumbilia is here. Yusek uh, na pala, Yusek. Uh-huh. Senator Kiko, yes, we will, ano, uh, may PSA din pong representative dito and I think they are, uh, they're hearing your uh, your sentiments, so I think we will discuss that how we can yes, really zero in on what you are saying. Para magkaroon ng benchmark, especially since we have this law, 
So we will know already how you know it's impacting really the yes. the, the the group. Thank you. If if I may add, ma'am, very quickly uh, for PSA and for NEDA, you know, uh, yung ating uh, four piece, uh, uh -huh. maliwanag don yung yung uh, yung levels of poverty, hindi ba? Alam natin sino yung poorest of the poor, ilan sila? Alam natin yung just above the poverty line, ilan sila? Alam natin yung uh, just below the poverty line. In other words, based on the data and the research, maliwanag yun eh. Why don't we do the same for our farmers? Sino yung mga poorest of the poor farmers? Sino yung just above the poverty line farmers? Nasaan sila para talagang directed yung ating interventions? So hopefully when you discuss incomes of livestock, we can we can look at the whole uh, universe of farmers and fisher folk incomes uh, and benchmark it so that uh, and, and research and polling and uh, the data by the PSA is critical. Yun na lang po ma'am, uh, just that question. So that alam natin na nakakadagdag ang uh, interventions natin at kumikita ang farmer. Otherwise wala nang gusto mag, mag uh, farming. Pag nalaman nilang poverty lang naman lahat yan, eh, hindi na. Eh, kawawa ang food security po natin. Salamat ma'am, uh, just for the record. Uh, and we hope to see some results in that regard. Thank you, Senator Kiko. Uh, uh, really, uh, it took us a long time to write this law because there are no... Uh, no I, I, I look for any... Uh, article or study on livestock, parang wala akong nakita. Kaya I asked the Department of Finance to ask PIDS to make the study. Because we cannot make a law based on hunches. <laughs> we have to have a study to support it. That's why uh, we asked them. We asked them in July and it's only now, uh, sometime in November, that they have a, a certain figure and we met and then we and I decided to hear this bill na kasi at least may basis for this bill kaysa naman na parang wala naman tayong basis gawa tayo ng gawa ng law. I, I cannot uh, uh, bear that naman na walang basis ang law, magsusulat kami ng law, di ba? So, uh, thank you, Neda, PIDS, and uh, for that presentation. Uh, so, we have heard... Uh, 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 stand of NEDA and PIDS. May we hear now the stand of DA uh, in this. Uh, who will speak for DA? Madam Chair, uh, Yusik Medrano okay. of Black Star will Thank make you. a presentation as well, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Yusik Medrano. Uh, engineer, so uh, please, uh, after Yusik Medrano. Okay, good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Senators and uh, everybody. Uh, they said that uh, uh, for a while, may I intercede? They said that Amy Marcos is here. Is, is she here? Or because if she wants to make a comment, they said that she's here. I I I I don't see her in the pictures. Is she here? Mom, she registered. She registered earlier, Madam Chair. But she's not here yet. We will check, Madam Chair. Again. Please check because I failed to ask her to make a comment before we ask Secretary Medrano to make a comment. Yes, Madam Chair. If she's not here, you just tell me when she's here, I will call her. We can go on to uh, Yusek Medrano. Is that yes, okay? Madam okay. Yes, Madam Chair. Yusek uh, Medrano, you can proceed. Once again, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Yusek uh, Medrano, kindly check your audio. Uh, medyo mahina po. Okay, uh... It's a pleasure to present uh, the position of the DA Livestock Agencies on the various Senate bills 
to uh, develop and strengthen the Philippine uh, livestock industry. Uh, cl clear ba ako? Uh, okay yes. Ba? Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, as a background, uh, the Senate Bill 139, otherwise known as the uh, Philippine Livestock Industry Development Act of 2019, uh, aims uh, for the Philippine development industry to attain competitive, competitiveness status and uh, to address the major causes of underdevelopment of the livestock sector. And uh, in the bill, uh, the sponsor, Senator Villar, cited the following as context of the proposed bill. Is low development of the livestock sector negatively skewed or low fund allocation of the livestock development lack of serious livestock development plan, uh, lack of coordinated livestock program implementation and development, and the Bureau of Animal Industry reduced role in developing the livestock uh, industries. Now, next slide. Well, the bill proposes uh, the following to resolve the problems. Uh, first is the formulation of a 10-year framework for livestock development and uh, Another is uh, the merging, uh, restructuring, or rationalization of livestock agencies uh, to be under the Livestock Development Authority and uh, an annual base appropriation of five billion for livestock uh, development. Next slide. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our proposition and recommendation. Uh, first. Uh, the structural reforms that will strengthen functions to improve uh, delivery of uh, services, more focused services. And uh, the livestock agencies uh, can be restructured and rationalized according to major function uh, to it, uh, uh, regulatory uh, functions and developmental functions and all the other functions and services can be uh, aligned uh, under these big offices. The livestock agencies may continue to exist with streamlined and rationalized function that uh, does not uh, duplicate with each other. Next slide. Uh, secondly, uh, we support the strengthening of the overall management and supervision of the DA livestock agencies and uh, as proposed uh, the creation of the office of undersecretary for livestock with uh, the overall uh, authority function to oversee and directly supervise uh, the operation of the livestock agencies and uh, the creation of two assistant secretaries uh, will also uh, focus by uh, by function, okay? assistant secretary for livestock development and assistant secretary for livestock regulation. Next slide. Uh, this is the diagrammatic uh, representation of our proposed strengthening of the overall management of and supervision of the livestock agencies. The figure one is uh, the current working structure of the livestock group and the uh, uh, figure two is uh, our livestock uh, agency's uh, proposal. Uh, in the livestock agency proposal, uh, you can see that, that I one. would tend to, uh, for it. can I uh, make a comment? Yes, madam. Uh, you are making unnecessary, ano, parang, alam mo, <laughs> hindi ko magustuhan niya mga proposal niyo na may secretary, may USEC, may ASEC, <laughs> eh puro na, bago ma-implement, katagal-tagal. I would rather that you separate yung regulatory and separate yung, ano, developmental. Walang pakialam yung developmental sa regulatory. Kasi yung regulatory, importation yun eh. Yes, At saka yung disease control and all that. And then yung uh, developmental, eh, 
yun yung magpo-focus on developing. Kasi pag pinagsama mo yan, eh, dun lang, baba. kaya yun nga problema ngayon, lahat regulatory, walang gusto ng developmental kasi walang pera doon sa developmental, ang pera na ando sa regulatory. <laughs> kaya pag hiwalayin mo yun, huwag ganyan. Kasi pag inilagay mo sa isang USEC, tapos lahat sila na ando, kabagal-bagal niya. Yes, Madam Chair. And then piliin niyo na lang yung under sa developmental and under sa regulatory kung sino iya under niyo doon. Oh, like for example, Philippine Carabao Center and National Dairy Authority. Eh ano yan eh? Developmental yan eh. Dapat eh ang trabaho niyan eh mag-develop ng ating dairy, eh. hindi at saka, hindi at saka livestock, hindi yan under a USEC. Dapat yan na ah, yung in charge ng developmental under na yun doon eh. Tinan mo yung Philippine Carabao Center uh, made in 1995 at yung isa 1992. Uh, that is 28 years and 25 years. Bakit naman ang ating milk production eh? 1% of demand. For, you've been in existence for more than 25 years and then yung milk, milk production mo, 1% of demand. Kung ako ang nag-head niya, magpapakamatay na ako kasi wala akong performance. Diba? Dapat may target sila. Bakit naman naging 1% of demand after being in existence for 25 years? Kasi nga yung inyong klase ng inyong uh, organization na Kala, kalayo-layo, hindi napapansin yung iba dahil ang layo-layo sa ano. Tinan mo yan, may secretary, may undersecretary, may assistant secretary, may assistant secretary. Na yung assistant secretary naman, walang power yun. Kung hindi bibigay ng USEC at hindi, wala rin power yung USEC kung hindi bibigay ng, ng secretary. Kaya walang nangyayari, walang developmental. Oo. Tapos napabayaan din yung regulatory kasi ang pinag pin in e e e ang pinag-aawayan eh yung importation eh wala pala namang control on diseases walang uh, cont border control how can you have existed for since 1913 na wala kayong border control on diseases <coughs> uh, so you see that there's wrong priority <laughs> di ba Oh. Ang pinag parang palaging pinagtatalunan ko magkano i-import eh. Oh, tapos pag nag-import hindi naman ma-control yung diseases that comes with the import. Kaya ayan, nag ASF tayo. Oh. Wala tayong border control eh. Hanggang ngayon pinag-aawayan ko saan itatayo yung border control. Eh. 'Di ba? May nabasa ako sa diaryo na itatayo daw sa ano, sa ang pangalan nito. sa subik dahil wala daw lupa sa Manila oh. ay nako so siguro you abandon that plan na maraming levels na gano i-direction nyo na isa sa developmental at isa sa regulatory yes, para po merong nagkaluko-luko alam natin kung mahina development di yung responsible yung developmental kung nagkaluko-luko sa regulatory at saka sa disease control ang responsible yung disease control oh wag niyo nang pagsamahin yan mahirap yan at saka gusto ko if we will create a fund diretso kung sinong particular fund ang mag implement noon para pag hindi niya na implement yon makikita natin di ba Hindi na yung dadaan sa sekretary, pupunta sa USEC, pupunta sa ASEC, bago hindi na makakarating do sa developmental function. Eh. Di ba ganyan ang ginawa natin sa RCEP? Di, di, ang mechanization sa Filmec, ang uh, seed production sa Filrise. Oh. Di malinaw ang training, TESDA, ATI, tapos ang, ang loans sa DBP, Land Bank. Di malinaw yun. Oh, ganun ang gusto ko sanang mangyari. Hindi yung maraming level-level na ganyan. Ayoko niyan kasi nawawala along the way. Hindi na i-implement. Eh. Idiretso natin dun sa pagbibigyan. Yes, Madam Chair, we agree. Okay. Uh, uh, <coughs> can I proceed? The... Oh, proceed. Dami-dami uh, yes, naman. Uh, yes. While uh, we have our uh, DA proposal, uh, next slide, please. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, we uh, respect and totally agree with the, the senator. Uh, and uh, this is actually the proposed structure under uh, SB 139. And uh, in the proposed uh, bill, uh, there is going to be an established Philippine Livestock Authority uh, to be led by an undersecretary. And uh, uh, the creation of two uh, regulatory uh, offices, uh, the Livestock Regulatory Office and the Livestock Industry Development Office to be led by uh, an assistant secretary. This is what uh, the proposed, this is the provision of the proposed uh, structure, Madam Chair. And then uh, uh, there will be a realignment, uh, merging, uh, rationalization of uh, the livestock agencies. And as you can, uh, as, uh, you, you can see in this structure, nahati uh, hati at nailagay na yung mga different functions and and uh, in the different uh, under the two major offices regulatory at saka industry development and uh, with this proposed structure under SB 139 uh, we really uh, respect it because uh, it will really strengthen the delivery of our services this is uh, yung uh, dito ito yung sinasa sinasabi niyo ma and then uh, yung mga proposed uh, related bills in the proposed uh, related bills, uh, nakalagay po sa mga different boxes, and uh, we just uh, uh, put there where uh, they are most appropriately uh, integrated or realigned. Yung apat na bills from the from our beloved uh, senators. Next slide, please. So in summary, uh, and this is going to be the working tables uh, to be appreciated and considered uh, in, the, in the discussion of the bill. No? From uh, the existing now to the proposed bill of SB 139, uh, which is a restructured and rationalized uh, Philippine uh, Livestock Authority. Next slide. Now, on our uh, proposition and recommendation number two, uh, we really support the integration of the existing livestock development plans and commodity roadmaps to the proposed 10-year uh, uh, development framework, again, as uh, stipulated in the proposed bill. The completed livestock commodity roadmaps have been integrated and mainstreamed to, the, to be part of the crafting of the 10-year livestock development framework as provided for in the Senate Bill 139. And uh, of course, integration of all these plans and roadmaps shall provide a conducive environment for the rapid promotion and development of the livestock and poultry sector. Next slide. Uh, yeah, we are very happy and uh, uh, we fully support uh, the, the, the provision that duties and tariff uh, uh, will be proud back to support the livestock development pattern after the, li um, after the rice tarification law. And the livestock agencies I strongly support the flowing back of duties and tariff collection from importation of animals, milk and dairy products, meat and meat products, including animal field ingredients to the development of the local industry as pattern after the RTL. And uh, this is a most welcome legislative act to provide the necessary and sustainable funding support for the development of the livestock and poultry sector and also support the local farmer directly affected by such importation. Next slide. Well, uh, this is uh, just to manifest our full support to, to the passage and all incorporation of uh, related Senate bills 
uh, to uh, support the livestock industry development. And uh, again, uh, mentioned earlier by, uh, uh, by the chair, uh, SB 821 by Senator Sanyangara, uh, SB 1048 by Senator Ralph Rector, SB 1297 by Senator uh, Lito Lapid, and SB 2176 introduced by Senator Kiko Pangilin. Next slide. <clears throat> yeah, uh, the DA Livestock Agencies uh, express sincere appreciation to Senator Cynthia Villar together with all the other senators for their profound concern in the development of the livestock and poultry industry through uh, SB 139 and all the other related uh, Senate bills. Uh, with the serious challenge confronting the sector today, we perceive that this legislative light is very timely and critical to the overall and the rapid development of the livestock and poultry industry. While uh, there are uh, specific uh, issues and concerns from the different livestock agencies of the DA, uh, we live uh, we, we, we submit to the wisdom of uh, the Senate on uh, their uh, consideration and resolution. With this, uh, Madam Chair uh, and members of uh, this committee, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, uh, Secretary Yusek Medrano. Okay. And so we will hear now the presentation of the private sector. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. From Sinag, Madam Chair, from Sinag, Engineer So. Okay. Yes. Yeah, one slide lang, no, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, paki, ano na lang yung, ano, yung... Ma Bali, ma Madam Chair, ito is based on uh, import of 2021. Okay. Uh, kung uh, may tampo kami kay Mercy eh, sa NEDA no? kasi she promised na hindi na ilalagay sa rice tarification law yung, yung ibalik yung taripa ng uh, uh, etong MDM uh, na 40% no? at uh, after that eh, binaba kagad, uh, lumabas kagad ng EO at retain yung 5% Pero, Madam Chair, kung uh, titingnan natin dito sa computation natin, uh, yung arrival ng uh, cost ng uh, chicken cut, chicken leg quarter, the bone, fat, opal, ring, and skin, uh, saka yung support, no? Uh, yung yung uh, first force, first uh, column is the number of kilos na dumating, no? Yung second column is the average price na presyo ng uh, its uh, commodities. Uh, mm. kung, kung ibalik natin yung taripa sa 40% or 35%, ito yung makokolekta natin. Kailangan natin ng pera, uh, Madam Chair. So, ito ang naisip natin sana. Ibalik na yung tarif ng pork and chicken sa sa pwede ng ano no, allowable ng WTO kasi ang allowable ng WTO is sa uh, 40% uh, doon sa MDM and uh, kung lahat eh, i-ano na lang natin sa 40% yan ito ang makokolekta natin na tariff no? uh, yung sa chicken is around 11 billion no? yung sa pork is around 25 billion pesos so, yung development kasi na sinasabi ng DA na 5 billion, hindi natin kayang uh, gawin dahil uh, ang Luzon is almost uh, 70% na wala no? yung, yung hot industry. Kaya, kaya yung mga port na dinadala rito is galing Bisaya, Mindanao. Kaya medyo mataas ang cost. Kung makita natin yung presyo dun sa Bisaya, Mindanao, uh, sa Bisaya, is only 155 ang live weight. 
ang uh, Mindanao is only around 160 ang live weight. So dumadating dito, umabot ng 220, kaya mataas ang cost natin. Uh, yung sa MDM, eh, yung sa MDM, uh, sin uh, ang additional cost lang is 56 centavos ang computation namin per 100 grams. Why? Because uh, doon sa 80 pesos, no, yung MDM na kinompute natin, yung the bone chicken, Uh, 40% ang kung 40% ang taripa that is 32 pesos no additional so 80 plus 32 is 112 pesos at sa ngayon is 5% uh, is 84 pesos so 112 less uh, 84 pesos is 28 pesos may um, I ask a question may I ask a question uh, yes ma'am uh, yes. Sendong. Uh, kasi nakikita ko ever since nagbabantay ako niyan tariff. Iba yung tariff ng good meat at saka offal. Yung yes, offal is 5%. Yung good meat is uh, 35. Ang under MAV. Tapos uh, something like higher yung uh, 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 outside MAV, something like that. So, dito sa listahan mo, alin ba dito ang opal at alin ang, ang good meat? Kasi dalawa lang classification nila eh, sa tariff. The good meat and the opal. Yun nga ang yeah. napapansin ko, napakababa ng opal, 5%, tapos yung good meat, ang taas, 35%. Uh, so, ang ginagawa nila, pinapas nilang opal yung good meat. So, yun yung uh, parang yeah. gusto kong i-change kasi subject to, ano yun eh, to, to abuse yun eh. Yung 5% na offal, uh, medyo pa, dapat malapit yung offal sa good meat para hindi na sila magluko doon eh. Kasi pag 30 and then 5, napakalaking difference noon na ipapas on nila na offal yung good meat eh. Kasi tinitingnan namin yung report ng mga foreign, talagang sa kanila malami ang pumapasok sa ating good meat. Pero pang nakita natin sa customs, kakunti ang good meat eh. Kasi nga may 5% na offal, yun yung ina-abuse eh. Doon dinadala ang good meat eh. Kaya doon pa lang. I mean, hindi pa yung rate. Kasi pinakikita mo dito yung rate na 35 at saka 40. Hindi pa yon yung opal na 5%. So, yun ang problem natin pag sulat natin ng bagong batas kung ano gagawin natin dun sa opal and good meat. So, at saka hindi ko alam kung ano dito ang na dito sa listahan mo ang na 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 ka-classify na opal at good meat. Kasi dalawa lang ang classification eh. Ma'am, yung opal is ano, uh, kung makita nyo, yung bailey uh, is uh, 186 pesos itong port, no? Uh, yung belly is definitely hindi opal yung good meat yun, yes. belly. Uh, oh, yung yung opal, debone, ano yung debone? Debone is yung ano, mechanically debone yung... Oh, uh, opal ba yun o oh, good meat yun? Sa chicken yun, sa chicken. Uh, hindi, pero mas mababa yata ang, ang ano eh, kaya i-differentiate nyo kasi yung... De bond yata mas mababa rin ang tariff niyan eh kasi imported yan tapos ginagamit ng food processor, di ba? So maybe you can distinguish according to the tariff na meron ang 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 ano is uh, i-distinguish natin based on the tariff rate para makita nating maliwanag kung saan may problema tayo. Yeah. Um, ang, ang kasi ginawa, I think yung rings and skin Uh, ano yan? Opal yan. Di ba? Yeah. Yung fat, opal ba yon? <laughs> fat is, uh, I think yung tariff code ng uh, uh, fat hiwalay dun sa opal. Kaya nga, gusto ko sana, kasi babasahin ko tong pinamigay nyo, gusto ko yata yung classification depende sa tariff. Para alam natin kung anong changes ang gagawin natin, di ba? Yun lang, request ko lang. Kasi hindi ko maintindihan. Ang pag nagbabasa ako, ang nakikita ko lang ay yung good meat at saka offal. Tapos ang baba-baba ng offal, tapos ang taas-taas ng good meat, 
Tapos sinasabi nila based on studies na marami ang natural naman yun sa costos. Marami yung good meat po pinapapasok nilang offer para mababa ang tari. Okay? Ma'am sa... Yan lang ang comment ko. Yeah, Madam Chair, dito sa presentation natin, uh, ginawa natin ano na lang, 35% and 40% na lang. Hindi naman sila papayag ng ganun. Ano, kahit hindi hindi papayag eh, pabibito nila yan eh. Kaya we should be realistic. We, we should find a middle ground between us and the executive. Kasi maipasaman namin niya kung ibito rin ng president, wala rin yan. Uh, Madam Chair, kasi Mag-compromise mag kayo I-distinguish na natin Ano ba yung reasonable And then, uh, anyway Kung medyo mataas man ang tariff uh, Ibibigay naman sa inyo eh. Oo. Through the Livestock Competitiveness Enhancement Fund uh, I don't think uh, Yung ibababa nila ng pagkabababa is acceptable. Hindi rin naman nila i-accept yung itataas mo ng pagkataas-taas. Uh, so we find a middle ground here para uh, mapasa namin. Wala kaming problema sa kongreso. Siyempre pro-farmer pro kami. Kaya lang yung executive, uh, I don't know, uh, gusto nila reasonable na tariff. So we compromise. Uh, but is acceptable to everybody. So that, uh, ako nag-compromise sa Coco Levy, we had to compromise because uh, yung first Coco Levy namin na Vito. <laughs> yeah. Ma uh, so, Madam I, I don't uh, want a Vito. I don't want a Vito. So I think hindi sila papayag na uh, pati yung Opal magiging 35%. Hindi papayag yan. So, ihiwalay na natin yung 5% kung ano yung kumu-qualify sa 5% at uh, ihiwalay natin yung, yung mas mataas ang tariff and then mag-suggest tayo ng how do we do it. Ako, I don't uh, subscribe to 5% sa OPAL tapos 30% ang good meat kasi encouraging is ma ano lang yun, uh, technical smuggling. But I don't know the opinion of others. But uh, yun ang aking opinion doon. Madam diba? Chair, uh, yung, sa, ano kasi, yung sa MDM, uh, bali dapat bumalik na yan sa ano, uh, 40% after doon sa rice tarification nung napasa yung no, batas. No, no, this, is, no, this is not rice. This is pork and chicken. Wala naman problema sa rice. Babalik yun. Temporary lang yun. This is about pork and chicken. Ma Yes ma'am, uh, yung sa ano kasi, yung sa quantitative restriction hindi, ng rice. Hindi, hindi yung, ma, ito binaba rin to because of ASF, uh, ASF, binaba rin to eh. Sendong, binaba rin to because of ASF. Diba, nag, uh, yes. uh, oo, uh, nag executive sa, order na inapil, nag law na ibinaba to because of ASF. Yung ibinaba ang tariff para wag masyadong magmahal ang pork and chicken, di ba? Remember, there's a law, aside from RCEP, there's a law. Iba pa yung RCEP. Yung sa RCEP, mababa lang ang ibinaba. Ito, grabe ang baba nito. 15 and 25. Di ba? First three months, 10 and 20. Uh, next three months to one year. Di ba nag one year tayo dito? Uh, 20 and 25. Uh, you remember? 15 and 25. Yeah. Iba, ma iba to. Iba to kaysa doon sa RCEP. Oo. Yung sa, ano kasi, yung sa MDM, yung debone ng chicken, oh. hindi kasama ito dito sa ASF, no? Hindi kasama yan. Oh. Yung, yung debone chicken kasi, uh, after yung QR, dapat bumalik na sa 40%. Pero naglabas uh, ng EO ang presidente, uh, 2021, January. Para i-retain yung 5%. Uh, up to 2022 yung, yung request. Uh, Wala yung, siyang EO na uh, 5%. EO 138. Uh, isa lang 138. EO 138. No, no, yung sa mechanical, mechanically debone 123. EO 123. Hanapin ko yun. 
Oh, ang I remember Mari, is Mari, the EO Mari. na ibinaba nila yung, yung 30 to 15 for 3 months uh, to 10 and then 15 for the next 7 uh, uh, 9 months. 1 year lang yun, yun eh. 1 year lang yun eh. 1 year. Yes, um, support yun ma'am. Pero yung sa sa mechanically deboned chicken, uh, bali binaba rin, no? From 40 to 5. Pero may, may ano yung EO? May date? Ano ang date covering that? Dapat Up to expire. 2022. Up to 2022. What month in 2022? I think December. Uh, I have to find that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Pero ma'am, kung, kung bumalik yung taripa nun, uh, almost yun, yun pa lang sa MDM, ang makokolekta is 7 billion. Okay. Additional 7 okay. billion. So, so kung makikita natin yung linagay natin kung magbalik sa 40%, uh, sa chicken, makakaano tayo ng 11 billion. Kung I request ko lang sa iyo yung mataas ang tariff ihiwalay mo can you indicate the tariff do sa classification okay. ng chicken and then ano tariff nila and then the support ano ang tariff nila can you classify it that way para lang makita namin kung alin ang mababa ang tariff alin na mataas ang tariff ha okay. yes the, 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 the copy i want you to send me a copy and then what is the tariff rate kasi dito nilagay mo yung Poor 35 and 40, pero yung opal, hindi siya 35 and 45%. Yan. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, ang ang okay. inaano ka, kung may ano natin doon sa yung MDM sa... Yeah. Sa, it's okay. Kung well, meron lang executive out, order na binaba yun for a certain period of time, we can look at that. Oh, sige. Okay. When we uh, study, when we make the final drop of this law. Okay. So, paki ano mo lang sa akin with the tariff rate, ha? Yung, yes, yung classification mo ng chicken, ano ang tariff rate nung mga yon, And then, yung pork, ano tariff rate noon? Para lang maliwanag sa akin. Not the absolute amount. Nilagay mo lang dito 35 and 40. But yung iba, 5 lang yan, eh. Ang tariff niyan, eh. Ha? Yes, ma'am. I'm, sure, I'm very sure sa Opal 5 yan. Uh, in fact, yun ang kinu-question ko na sobra baba na marami nagte-technical smuggling. Yes, ma'am. I-present na lang namin na, no? Yung okay. mayroong 5%. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's all, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, so, are there any more who will comment from the other sector, from the private sector? Ma'am, ma'am, ako ma'am, I raised my hand, ma'am. Okay. Uh, your, uh, can you introduce yourself? Can you I, am I am attorney in Xiong, ma'am, of the United Broiler Racers Association. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yung comment ko lang doon sa presentations ng DA at saka ng NEDA, uh -huh. uh, number one, silent sila ma'am dun sa na yung mga imports ma'am nanggagaling from subsidized uh, agricultural systems. Uh, hanggang ngayon walang institutional recognition yung dalawa na yan. Dun sa problema na yon ay in one forum na-discuss ko to kaila Secretary Habito at kaila Dr. Briones. Uh, I understand they have an open mind on this but uh, the sooner we recognize this uh, reality, mas magiging realistic po yung mga interventions ng DA at saka ng NEDA. Number two, ma'am, uh, kailangan din i-recognize din nila na may... Uh, uh, yes, can I proceed? Kung mas yes, mawa, subsidize sila, mababa sila, di, di mas mat, mataas sila kung hindi sila subsidize. Or isang yes, subsidize namin kayo yes. para bumaba kayo. Eh, ma'am, may, may remedy dyan, ma'am. Kaso, hindi pa kami nag-uusap ng DA ng malalim dyan. Kasi magkaiba kami ng direksyon, ma'am, eh. Uh, uh, at least with this particular regime. Can you make a position paper which I can yes, read? Kasi yes, in the end, ako po ang susulat ng batas at ako rin ang magde-defend ng batas sa Senado. <laughs> Kaya yes, kung meron kayong different point of view, ipakita nyo sa akin para yes, I can... 
ano ko ano point of view oh, oh. kasi, ako, we, kasi we cannot wait for you forever because if we wait for you forever the the law will not be written nasilip no, nga ito eh kasi naghintay ako doon sa study ng PIDS 6 months eh oh. ngayon ako nahihiya lang sa private sector sa mga small farmer na hindi ko maipasa itong batas na to kaya nagmamadali ako ngayon pero ko yung mga position paper nyo hindi darating at hindi consider lalong madidelay ang kung iintayin ko lalong madidelay yung batas kawawa di nyo magbe-benefit sa batas di ba? Yes ma'am, we will submit ma'am. Hindi lang ako nakasubmit kahit. Oo. Pag kami nagawa ng batas, we are helping the backyard farmers. Kasi we are not very concerned about the businessman. Kasi sa businessman, policy lang yan eh. But they can take care of themselves. Yung mga small farmers, kahit maganda policy, talagang hindi nila kayang alagaan ang sarili nila. Kaya tuwing susulat kami ng batas, tinitake consideration namin sila. Kaya tayo, palagi sa batas natin, merong training. And uh, kung mapapansin nyo, lahat ng batas na sinulat ko, meron training ng ATA at TESDA. Kasi yun ang magsusolve dun sa problem ng mga small farmers na hindi nila alam kung ano dapat nilang gawin para lumaki ang kita nila. Oh. Kasi yung mga corporate farms, alam nila yan. Magaling sila. They only... The only thing they need is the right policy from the government, but they can really take care of themselves. Yung mga mahihi ng mga farmer natin maliliit, eh, hindi nila alam talaga. Hindi nila alam. Kaya sila yung tinutulungan natin palagi. That's why training and eh, training is very important. Kasi yun lang ang way matutunan nila kung ano gagawin nila para tumaas ang kita nila at maging efficient sila. Yun, yun. Kaya uh, kung may mga stand kayo, uh, padala nyo agad yung papers para mabasa ko, para makonsider natin pagsulat ng batas. Diba? Kasi this batas is, uh, ano rin to eh, parang we have to compromise. Kasi dapat yung batas acceptable sa mga legislator, acceptable din sa executive kasi they have the power of veto. <laughs> ma pwedeng ipavito yung batas, di ba? So, babalansihin din natin para tayo magtagumpay, di ba? Hindi tayo pwede na kung ano naisip natin yun na ilalagay kasi hindi naman papayag ang lahat. Kami, mahihirapan na nga akong i-depend sa senator. Pag napasa pa namin, pwede pang mavito. <laughs> eh ako, pag ako nagpapakahirap na, gusto ko wag na mavito kasi... Ano, kung the executive feels that they are very strong on something, kumukuha na kami ng pambalanse para hindi na i-recommend ang veto. Yun lang po. Pwede naman. Thank you, ma'am. We will submit. Okay. Hindi lang po kami nakasubmit ahead dahil may health concerns lang kami sa household ngayon. Eh. Uh, I- I- padala nyo lang email. email yes, ma'am. Committee. I will, we will submit to the council, uh, ma'am. Hindi tayo kailangan magkita. Email lang, magbabasa ako. Oh, yes, ma'am. Alam ko, negosyante ako. Pag nagsulat ang negosyante, alam ko naman kung ano ang dapat kong gawin, di ba? Para pareho lang naman tayong negosyante, di ba? Ako, I feel na pag negosyante ka, kailangan lang right policy. You don't need the, the, the help, uh, the financial help of government. Ang may kailangan lang ng financial help ng government, yung mga small Oo, because they don't have the resources. But tayo, right policies lang, we can do it. Oo. Yes, ma'am. I agree, ma'am. Yung ano lang naman yung enabling environment. Pero ang problema namin, ma'am, uh, yung production side, kaya namin, ma'am, eh. uh, at least most of the industry, the broiler industry, well, more or less, we are, sa performance, ma'am, we are at par with the world. Ang problema namin yung cost. And at the same time, we hindi level hindi level ho ang playing field pagdating ngon sa market. Number one, yung nabanggit ko na ho, yung we're being made to compete with subsidized products. Tapos so may distortion ho sa market, uh, may disconnect po between retail and farm gate prices. Halimbawa po ngayon, less than 80 pesos ang farm gate, pero according to DA Bantay presyo, nasa 160 ho yung yung uh, hindi bagsakan na presyo ng uh, manok, whole chicken. 
Pagkatapos, by way of comment man doon sa presentation pa, ma'am, ay yung 92 pesos po na for 2021 na cost of production ng broiler. Mataas po yun. Uh, with all due respect to Dr. Adriano, we are open we are open to to talking to to someone there in the DA uh, who would be willing to listen. But and di ba gumawa ng study nito na mga prices PIDS with NEDA? It's not DA. Uh, Ma'am, hindi ko kasi alam kung kung yung yung, yung nagpresent ngayon PIDS and NEDA, hindi naman gumawa ang DA. O PIDS. Sige ma'am, I will... So, yung all NEDA and PIDS. Kasi hindi pwede ang DA gagawa, di self-serving sa kanila yon. That's why we're asking NEDA and PIDS kasi hindi naman sila concerned. Sila eh figures lang yan. Kung ano lumabas, yun ang lumabas. ba? Diba? Oo, kasi hindi naman natin pwedeng gawing basis ang DA. Kasi DA, syempre ayaw nila ipakita kung pangit. ba? Diba? Kasi performance nila as at, at question. I mean... Uh, ano yun? Parang common sense, di ba? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Kung ako makikinig sa figure, I will ask NEDA and PIDS to do it because ano ba concern nila? Di naman sila nagmamanage ng department, di ba? Kanila. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm just asking them to produce figures that will be the basis of the law. In fact, I did not write this law until natapos nila yung study nila kasi... I don't know what what's happening. Ang ang nakita ko lang sa DA eh parang ang emphasis nila regulatory, wala silang developmental. 'Yun ang obvious na obvious sa DA. Regulatory sila, wala silang developmental. Eh hindi pwede yung regulatory lamang. Kailangan may developmental tayo. Natutulungan natin yung ating mga backyard farmers to be better, 'di ba? 'Yun ang Intention of the law, oo. Kasi yung regulatory at ang malaki pang question sa kanila, regulatory sila, import sila ng import, wala naman protection from diseases coming from imports. Oo, wala tayong border control. Pwede ba yung walang border control? Oo. Hindi nila ginawa yun. Hanggang ngayon hindi na i-implement ang border control. O paano na yun? Kaya nakapasok yung ASF na yan. Oo. Tapos yung pinagbawal nila swill feeding. Mapapagbawal mo ba yun sa mahirap kung hindi naiintindihan ng mahihirap kung ano yun? May hindi naiintindihan ng mahirap yun. Dito sa aming bayan, Metro Manila pa kami, swill feeding nga sila dito eh. Oh, ano ba mga kapitbahay namin dito nagsuswill feeding? Pinasarakungan lahat nung nag-ASF eh. O pinabayaran ko lahat sa DA para Tapusin yung swill feeding na yun, mahahawa pa. Kasi ako may alaga din ako, di mahahawa din sa kanila. At saka yung sinasabi ko nga, na, why, why hindi pinopromote yung, ano, yung high protein uh, vegetable for livestock? Eh, sa, ano, sa Thailand, pinopromote nila yun eh. Tino, ako nga, ginagawa ko yun eh. Oh. Ayoko nang bumili ng pagkain. Gusto ko, i-grow ko na lang yung pagkain ng akin livestock. May nag, nagagawa ako ng dairy farm sa Carabao. Oo. Nag, ang una kong ginawa, nagtayo ako ng, ano, eh, ng forage farm. <laughs> Para hindi na ako bibili ng corn. <laughs> Oo, wala akong pambili ng corn. <laughs> Kasi gusto ko yung aking, uh, yung aking farm school is self-sufficient. Lahat ng kita nila, yun lang ang gastos nila. I don't think I can earn enough to buy corn. So, nagtayo ako ng 4-H farm. So, kung ako, kasi gusto ko lang, kasi negosyante ako, gusto ko self-sufficient ako. Yung hindi ako nagpapaluwal. Eh, kung ako nga, nagtitipid, eh, di lalo na yung malilit na farmer. ba? Diba? <laughs> Sila talaga, wala silang alternative. Ako nga, I can pay, but I don't like to pay. So, nagtayo ako ng 4-H farm. So, yung mga ganun ba, So, yun ang tinatanong ko, ba't hindi ituro yun sa mga small farmer para kung wala silang pambili ng corn, they do it na matayo sila ng forage farm. Diba? So, Ma'am? Sir Insyong, uh, you're Ma very welcome. Padala nyo lang yung, ano nyo, yung stand nyo on things and then we will consider that. Ma'am, can I comment on some of the provision, proposed provisions, ma'am? Maiksi lang, ma'am. Oh, sino ba? Then, na, uh, sino ba? Yung na, yung sa draft ma'am yung sa 139, yung sa draft, yung Senate Bill 139. 
may mga tanong lang and concerns or hindi uh, yung, yung mga Senate bill wala yan hindi yan na magiging final draft kaya nga tayo uh, nag-usap ngayon uh, that would just parang nag nagpa-file lang kami para masimula na yung process of uh, doing a bill di ba Uh, so hindi necessarily ko ano nilagay namin doon iyon ang final bill parang that's the start of the process if you see the bills iba-iba sila si senator recto gusto niya lang financial assistance to those affected by asef ay a- a- ano ba ya asef yung yung sakit di ba kasi he comes from batangas maraming ano doon maraming uh, uh, backyard farmers doon. Yung kay Angara is about ano, native animal. Yung kay, kay Lapid is about diagnostics, uh, which is very limited. Yung kay, yung ang medyo general lang yung amin ni Kiko at saka ni Nancy. Yung more or less. But we're not, ano, kasi pag nag, ano kami ng amin bill, eh, That is a place to start on. Kaya nga after filing the bill, I asked PIDS and NEDA to to write as uh, to do a study, so that will become the basis. May recommendation ng NEDA kung ano dapat gawin namin, but it doesn't follow na susundin namin yon. Oo. Kaya nga tayo nag-uusap ngayon para makita natin kung ano susundin natin. Para kung may mga hindi tayo mag-agree, mag-compromise na tayo para hindi mabito yung bill natin. ba? Diba? Kasi sayang lahat ang hirap natin pag nabito yan. Okay? So, ano po yung uh, bill, okay na, bill na final? It's all ano suggestions. Uh, so, if you have suggestions on certain things, you make your suggestions. Ma'am, ano na lang ma'am? I, I will just submit ma'am. I will have to cut my... My my intervention. Uh, may may ahatid ko sa vaccination center. Oh, Thank sige. you po. Basta padala mo lang yung iyong ano, comment. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, can you introduce yourself? Uh, you just speak out, please. Just speak out. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, speak out. Yes. Introduce yourself. Yes. Uh, good morning. Oh, ah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Ah, uh, Chester. Okay. Yeah. Good Good morning, uh, Senator. Uh, Uh, Cynthia and uh, Senator Kiko, my um, buntag. Um, uh, Madam Chair, we have ju- uh, we want to point out lang three three things. No, first is don po sa ano um, Senate Bill five Senate Bill. Uh, we we all ano our sector is supporting that Senate Bill. Uh, nakikiusap lang kami kung pwedeng ma interject lang uh, on the Senate Bill 1048 of Senator uh, Recto that uh, providing direct financial assistance to backyard livestock. Sana maisama na lang po backyard and uh, and commercial. Yun lang po yung observation namin. So 30% na lang po, isama na lang din po yung commercial, not only the backyard. And number two po, uh, on the presentation of uh, NEDA and uh, the PIDS uh, presentation. Uh, uh, yes, may I comment on that? Parang yes, yung ma'am. financial assistance, parang sa mahihirap yun. <laughs> so yes, baka mahirapang kaming ilagay yung commercial. Ngayon, kung may gusto kayo matulungan kayo, cite a specific project wherein we can help finance, di ba? Okay, ma'am. Sa commercial. Okay, Kasi ang bakya, ang ano talaga, financial assistance, uh, usually para sa mahirap. Kaya nga, palaging may classification. Like for example, sa rice, two hectares and below. O ganon, di ba? So siguro dito, maglalagay din ng qualification kung gano'ng karaming ang ginogrow niya. Yun lang ang entitled to financial assistance. Kasi ang target ng financial assistance yung mahihirap. Oo, kaya I doubt it if makaklasify ang commercial. What we can do for commercial is to ano, to do projects that will benefit you but uh, it's not direct financial assistance. To finance projects that will de- benefit you. Maybe you can suggest projects that you like which we can do under the the livestock competitiveness enhancement fund that is not that is not a uh, financial assistance kasi talaga yung financial assistance para sa mahirap lang yon uh, it's a policy of government hindi hindi sila papayag na yung commercial bibigyan ng financial assistance i think so 
Senator, Senator, we, we understand that. Siguro we will just give very short, ano na lang, we will submit yung suggestion namin, yung uh, support, yep. if not the financial, just a support for the commercial part. Yes, for us. yes. Kung anong projects ang pwede naming gawin that will benefit you, but not necessarily direct financial assistance. Okay. Yes. Yun. Thank you, ma'am. For the second point, yung regarding sa NEDA and PIDS uh, presentation, yes, we do agree that uh, uh, with our um, uh, neighboring uh, Asian country and other countries na talagang mas mababa po yung uh, inputs and uh, cost to produce nila. Of course, mm -hmm. tama si Attorney Bong, uh, hopefully our NEDA and PDIS will also present the other side na bakit sila mababa. Maybe nga, not only dun sa subsidy, but their Ministry of Agriculture or uh, parang de Department of Agriculture po nila, they are ano they have program supporting the ano the private or commercial and backyard. So para Ako, makita lang po uh, how can we yes ma'am. I understand that. Kasi alam mo ang production ng sector of agriculture as a contribution to agriculture 50 53 percent ang crops 30 30 uh, 2% ang ano ang uh, livestock poultry and dairy and 15% ang fisheries. Pero if you will look at their budget, mas malaki budget ng fisheries kesa livestock. Pinakamaliit ang budget niyo eh. Wala lang kumikibo noon kasi hindi kayo na AASF, hindi kayo nagrereklamo. Nagreklamo lang kayo no may AASF kayo. Pero ako no nakikita ko na yan bakit 33% ang contribution nyo, eh bakit ang, ang share nyo of the budget is so small? Mas malaki pa ang fisheries, nakalahati lang ang contribution relative to you. Tapos yung ating, ano, yung ating masyadong ano, sa rice, emphasis sa rice. Yun. Oo. Although malaki ang contribution ng rice, 20%, at saka talagang lahat ng tao... Uh, Mawala ng lahat, wag walang mawala ang rice. <laughs> Pero ang laki ng budget ng rice. I mean, as ako, nakikita ko yun. Kaya you don't have to tell me na hindi kayo natulungan. We're changing that. Because nung ko pa yan nakita na bakit ang laki-laki ng contribution nila pero ang budget nila pinakamaliit. Pinakamaliit kayo eh. Relative yes, to fisheries and crops. Oo. Kaya alam ko yan. Huwag mong... I ituro mo lang sa akin kung paano kayo matutulungan na hindi financial assistance kasi yung financial assistance palagi yun sa mahirap eh. O, pero anong klaseng projects ang pwede namin gawin sa inyo na makakatulong sa inyo not necessarily financial assistance. O. Yes man. Uh, so lastly, uh, Senator, yung ano na lang po, uh, if not sa financial po, yung uh, presentation naman po ni uh, uh, Yusek Medrado kanina na Meron po silang restructure. Kami naman po makikiusap din sa DA. Right now po from Secretary Yusek and ASEC, meron pong 21 na Yusek and ASEC. So kung may restructure, sana po. Uh, but in fairness, uh, Madam Chair, uh, there are ASEC and USEC naman po na maayos naman po. But request namin na meron sanang isang ma-designate right now. Yes, we are stand alone for, for so many decades. Pero ngayon po, special case, may problema po kami na merong ma-designate lang sa amin na focus lang po with uh, in one or two years para po makabalik kami. And if we can stand alone so, again, okay. We can, ako, I don't uh, agree in a government uh, bureaucracy na ang dami-daming layer. Kasi pag madaming layer ang government bureaucracy, hindi na dumadating sa baba. Kaya I would agree, siguro may USEC for developmental, USEC for regulatory, tapos yung agency nasa under niya na lahat. Direct no na agency. Wala na yung ASEC-ASEC na yun. Pampagulo yun. Ngayon, kung gusto niya head of agency siya, ASEC. E di ASEC siya heading an agency. But never in between. Kasi pag dumadaad mi ang in between, lalong hindi dumadating yung, yung pera do sa intended beneficiary. At saka, iho, pag sulat namin ng bill, yung perang ibibigay, diretsyo na sa agency. Hindi na dadaan sa USEC at saka DA. Basta naka-specify sa law, anong agency ang magre-receive ng pera para siguradong siya na talaga. At pag hindi niya nagawa yon siya ang answerable. Uh, hindi ako yes, naniniwala sa very, di, very ano, maraming bureaucracy. Walang nangyayari pag ang bureaucracy eh, napaka dami. <laughs> na layer-layer. Bago dumating sa baba, wala na eh. Ubus na. 
Uh, Ma'am, that's all, ma'am. We know that. We know that. Oh, oh, we are solving that. We're solving that. Okay. Madam Chair? Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, Corazon Occidental po mula sa PBMA. Okay. Go ahead. Salamat po. Uh, mad, uh, Honorable Senator Cynthia Villar and Senator Kiko Pangilinan, to our esteemed guests present today, good morning po. I am Dr. Corazon Occidental, one of the thousand, thousand stronghold veterinarians here in the Philippines. Mm. And I am serving as treasurer of the Federation of Asian Veterinary Association and IPP din po ng PBMA. In the many years that I have been serving the veterinary profession, I could not count how many times I have reiterated how many how important veterinarians po sa food security, disease prevention, and of course sa public health. Diseases in the past, including but not limited to COVID-19, have caused us thousands of lives already and have affected our economy, crippling livelihoods of our Filipino farmers and stakeholders. Ito na po ang... Uh, Ma'am, um, nakarit away na rin po ako sa, sa aking sasabihin. Pero po, afterwards, meron din po akong isi-share tungkol sa kangina. Itinatanong nga, estimate na kita ng mga magbababoy. Tatapusin ko lang po itong inihanda at medyo kinakabahan po ako na request oh. po sana at pangangailangan ng veterinaryo. Mm -hmm. po. Dito po sa atin, sa Pilipinas, meron po tayong uh, license vet na 11,000 po mm -hmm. plus ngayon. Taon-taon uh, po ang mga bagong nakakapasa, mga 350 to 400. Mm -hmm. Mga po, coming into the workforce every day. We have around 22 colleges na nag-o-offer po and state universities ng Doctor of Veterinary Medicine nationwide. Mm -hmm. But despite of this, only provincial, LGU, cities, and first-class municipalities po ang merong veterinary officers. Case in point po, of the 1,488 municipalities across the country, only 322 are classified as first class, na ganun po ang tansya, and 1,166 technically don't have their own municipal bets. Although, a few others are lucky to have their own municipal agriculturist, pero bet din po yung naka, na, na uupo. Kasi talaga po mas... Kailang kailangan ng veterinaryo na lahat ng municipalidad. These numbers alone point to an open overlook problem in the country. The public's lack of access to veter veterinary services for us to be able to fulfill our roles in food safety and security. I believe po that strengthening the animal health and veterinary services in the country sa pamamagitan po nitong ating LDA would have made us one step ahead in preparing for the aforementioned mga pangangailangan po, lalo na yung disease prevention. Hindi ba ang gusto mong stand ay uh, require ang LGU na may veterinarian sila? Opo. Yun uh, po dapat sana. sa DILG yata yan. Hindi sa, hindi ah. sa ano. Kasi ang magbabayad sa inyo, uh, local government, baka part yan nung, di ba ngayon, i, i, uh, ano, i, i de devolve ang sum of the national income to the LGUs. Hindi. Merong, ano ngayon eh, this year, na almost 1 trillion will be devolved to local local government. So, ang tinatanong ngayon kung anong portion ng work ng national will be given to local. And one of them would be agriculture. Uh, so, maybe you can lobby na yung mga local government will hire veterinary uh, veterinarian in their ano. Kasi uh, siguro kami dito sa ano, it will be part of the bureaucracy na may veterinarian sila. Except sa aming bayan, <laughs> kasi ako chairman ng agriculture, tinanong ko yung aming agriculture, city agriculturist, kung ano ba ginagawa niya, kasi ako meron akong farm school sa bayan namin. Eh. Tapos sabi niya, eh, ano pala siya, veterinarian. So sabi niya, nag injection daw siya ng mga... Ano ba yun? Yun nga po aso. yung ano, aso. mga yung trabaho niya mag-injection ng aso. Eh, Hindi developmental po, on on agriculture. Mag-injection daw ng aso. Eh, sa mm -hmm. aming ang bayan eh, ang uh, <laughs> dami-daming asong siga. 
<laughs> di ba Ma, maganda po sana na talagang magkagan ng mandato? Dapat hindi pa may animal pound para dito ito mga asong sigang nagkalat na to eh, kunin at dalhin. So, isa, isa lang po yun sa mga ano sa mga eh, responsibilidad yan, eh, na mga local government yan eh. I, I think uh, you should lobby sa local government. Uh, meron sila ngayon ipamimigay na 1 trillion peso sa local government and then they will devolve some functions of the national to local. And I think yung veterinary would be devolved sa local. <laughs> Kasi ano, tingin ko ang, ang pinaka-importante nilang gawin, animal pound eh. <laughs> Kasi ang an dami mga... nagkalat na, na aso na hindi malaman kung kanino, nagkalat everywhere and then uh, hindi mo malaman kung ano gagawin sa kanila ang daming pusang nagkalat hindi mo rin alam kung ano gagawin sa kanila maybe this should be addressed by the local government maybe you should go there uh, and ano uh, oh uh, and uh, uh, ano ilalapit din po namin sila po ngayon eh gagawa sila ng uh, ng uh, gagawa sila ng ano kung ng ng uh, sta- uh, recommendation kung alin ang i-devolve sa local government and I think one of them would be yung veterinary. Oo, kasi uh, ako kasi very active ako dito sa siyudad namin. Daming asong nagkalat dito at mga pusa nagkalat. Sabi ko doon sa barangay namin, wala ba kayong animal pound dito para dalhin yan dyan? Kasi wala namang may ari eh, nagkalat. Hindi, Depende po ta- sa budget ng ano po, senator, ng mga municipality. Meron po yeah, pero animal na pound is very easy. You just catch them and put them in the animal pound and then tatanong mo kung sino may ari tapos kung walang may ari I think they have a rule on what to do with them. Opo. Uh, noted so, po. Sige po. Pero itutuloy ko na rin po yung iba naming concern. Isa po okay. yun. So yun po. In addition po, we, we hold the opinion that the Tupong PLA should also be given sole national controlling authority to regulate animal health, all animal health and veterinary products. And Are you part of government ba? Are you part of government? Um, Private po kami, private sector. sino yung PLA? Sino yung PLA? Ah, hindi po, yung Philippine Livestock Authority po ngayon. Nasa, ah. Ito po, na, mapasama po sana na um, yun nga. Kasi sabi niyo po in general eh, pero yung ipapasa din po namin ito as position paper, yung request na doon na po. Kasi po ngayon eh, napalipat sa DOH, eh alam naman po natin kung ganong napaharaming concern ng DOH. Bago pa Animal mapas- health office. sa DOH na ngayon? Ang re- yes po, ang regulation, ang uh, registration ng veterina- biologicals, ng uh, uh, veterinary... Is that ano, ay, ay, ay. Is that yun po? Na nasa DOH na pati animal? Nalipat po sa atin sa Pilipinas lang po. Uh, po pwede po bang mag-support uh, sa akin ang mga kasamahan ko sa PBDA? <laughs> Matagal na po namin inilalabi na sana yung mapabalik Hindi ko sa alam DOH. yun eh. Hindi ko alam yun na ah, ang, ang animal health nasa DOH na. Secretary. Yeah, with you. Sa dami ng problema ng DOH, I don't think animals should be their problem. <laughs> <laughs> Opo, kaya nagkaka- malaki po ang problema ng Veterinary Drug Association ngayon dahil po sa pagbabago ng mga regulatory functions na ganon. E yun nga pong veterinary disinfectants na sa DA man, pero inilipat naman ng division sa fertilizer and pesticide authorities. So eh, ano po natin mal- din yun eh. malilinis, malilinis ang lahat ng mga kulungan ng baboy, eh disinfectant. Ma, ma ano po yun ma, nawala lahat ng registration napakahirap po ng requirements sa hindi naman po with due respect sa uh, pestili- fertilizer and pesticide eh, ang trial ay kailangan sa halaman eh panghayop naman po yung veterinary disinfectant so, yun po yung mga immediate na sana po eh, anyway na, you make a, a position paper kasi kami man as a legislator ngayon ko lang nadinig na yung veterinary under DOH <laughs> hindi ko alam yun <laughs> No, hindi namin alam yon. Oo, tapos yung fertilizer and industry authority ay eh, under din yan DA. Opo nga. Siguro, eh, kaya nga ah, gusto natin ngayon, lahat ng regulatory and disease control sa isang 
sa isang grupo, tapos in developmental sa isang grupo, doon nagkamali ang DA, ang gulo-gulo nila eh. Oo. So, we are uh, streamlining DA. Iba yung regulatory and disease control and etc. Iba yung developmental. Oo. Kasi nawala ng focus eh. Parang lahat eh. Ultimum BAI at saka NMI, eh, sila lang yung pinakasikat. <laughs> Ang ginagawa, puro regulatory. Nag-aagawan sila sa regulatory function. Oo, naiwan yung developmental function. Kaya nagbabago tayo ngayon. Yun ang observation sa DA. Sa, at least sa livestock, poultry, and dairy. Parang ang gulo ng developmental as against regulatory and uh, disease control. Okay. Eh ang isa naman po namin inilabi nga po dahil naging naging batas o naging yun ang regu- regulation eh nailipat. Humingi naman sana kami na special lane sa DOH na pang veterinary. Pero yun nga po sa karamihan ng kal- kanilang concerns especially dito sa pandemic eh hindi pa rin po kami nahaasikaso. Kaya lumalapit din po kami ulit sa inyo. Magawa ka ng position po for understanding. Pa- Magawa ka ng position paper para pag inano namin yung regulatory and ano disease control, makasama ka doon. Opo, sige po, within as soon as possible po. Maraming okay. salamat. Padala so, nyo lang sa office prayer. namin. Okay. Po. Okay. You- so thank you po for having, having us today and it's an honor to be able to share you this afternoon. Pero po yung ano, isi-share ko din po yung may tanong kanina, eh hindi lang po ako nakasingit. Yung estimate na kita ng mga hog farmers, mm. eh, yung uh, backyard's point of view. Kasi ang sabi, may, paiba-iba daw yung presyo. Regardless na paiba-iba yung presyo ng market price ng baboy, uh, gamot, commodities, ito po yung, gal- ang nanay ko po kasi nag-alaga din ng baboy, naalala ko yung mga katwira niya nung bata siya. Oh. Importante po na proteksyon na natin ang market price ng mga baboy. Tamang approach sa disease prevention at laging mababang cost ng raw material. Hindi, ano ang Kasi average so, income ng talaga. farmers? Hindi, ano okay po, lang yan. Nadinig na namin yan. Ano yung sinasabi ito mo? Po. Alam mo ang average income ito ng po. farmers? Ito Magkano? Po. Hindi, ito po. Ngayon, pang ano po, basic na computation. Bumili ng isang inahin ngayon, uh, manganganak ng 4 uh, to 5 months. Ang halaga po ang average mga 20 to 25,000 pesos. Pagkaraan ng apat na buwan o limang buwan, manganganak siya walo hanggang sampung baboy na mga mabebenta ng mga 3,500 hanggang 5,000 sa unang anakan bawi na po sila. E yan po ang baboy, manganganak ng dalawang beses isang taon at buntis ng ilang buwan. Productivity po nila, so depende sa mag-aalaga, aabot po siguro ng mga 3, 4, 5 years. So yun po yung mentality ng mag, magsasaka. Kailangan po talaga natin proteksyon na mabubuhay po sila sa pag-aalaga ng baboy. Yun okay. lang. Maraming salamat. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, Yusek. Uh, Yusek natin. Yusek, uh, you're raising your hand. Yusek Reanyo. Oo, you want to say something? Hindi ka madinig, Yusek. Yusek, bumaligtad ang picture mo. <laughs> well, Yusek, uh, yeah. Ma'am, yung inaano ko, kanina yung discuss yung border control. Meron naman po tayo ng batas, di po ba, yung 10611 yata, food safety. Mm. Food safety law, nandun na lahat yun eh. Implementation oh. na lang po ang kulang eh. Isa okay, yun. Ma- Kaya nga yung food safe, may food safe, marami naman tayong batas na hindi na implement Oh, ngayon po, yung may suggestion kami nung araw na para talaga na matapos na yung mga problema na yan, i-centralize ang lahat ng agricultural products sa isang puerto. Halimbawa Luzon, sabihin natin Batangas o Subic, wherever, doon lang sila lahat para nakakontrol lahat natin yung papasok na agricultural products. Yung iba ka, saan nila dalhin? Sa Davao, may halimbawa sa Mindanao, meron tayong isa at saka sa Bisaya. Ganun po sanang gawin natin para talagang magkaroon ng kontrol ang buong industriya sa mga papasok sa atin. Hanggang sa mga sakit, lahat, malalaman natin. Pangalawa, yung sinabi po noon, gusto ko lang itanong, 
di ba nagbaba po tayo ng taripa para sa baboy at, baboy at manok sa importation? Ang sabi, makakapagpababa ng presyo. Ngayon po, hindi naman po nangyari. Oh, nasayang lang yung mga kikitain ng gobyerno para sa taripa. Bakit po hindi na nang ibalik yun? Tapusin na yan at hanapin talaga ang tunay na problema. Yung, yung pinapag-aral nyo po kanina na yung PDI ay sabi nyo, tama yung sabi nyo eh, global competitiveness ang wala tayo. Ngayon, sana dun makafocus ang gobyerno do sa global competitiveness natin. Saan ba tayo may kulang? In terms, nabanggit nila yung Thailand, pura manok. Hindi nila pag-aralan ang productivity level ng Thailand at saka ng Pilipinas pagdating sa manok. Bakit? Dito sa atin, tingnan nyo magkano si sisew. Tapos ang pagpapalaki natin ng manok, 32 days, 30 days. Samantalang ibang lugar, pinalalaki nila manok nila 2 kilos, 2 kilos above. Yung baboy natin, ganun din. Pinakaralan po namin yung sa baboy, yung productivity level. Kung ang baboy ay 90 kilos mo lang i-grow, i-grow mo ng up to 110, o itaas mo pa, nag-i-increase ang productivity level mo by more than 33%. So bakit hindi magkaroon ng batas na ang baboy dapat patayin lang pagka ang timbang nasa mga 120 o 130 kilos and above? Yun po yung mga immediate na mabilis na magagawa natin. Na konting panahon lang antay natin, mas marami tayong mapuproduce in a year time na meat in terms of ano, volume. Kesa Mabilis nga tayo mag-produce, ang aga natin magpatay, yung productivity level naman natin mababa. So, ang cost mo ng, ng baboy at manok, hindi na competitive. So, yun po ang mahalaga doon eh. Para ang halaga talaga ng ano, mapag-usapan. Ngayon, hindi na namin siguro sa COP, sa livestock, yung halaga ng pagkain. Pero that's more than 80%, 70% ng total cost ng production. So siguro dapat nakafocus din sila doon sa pinanggagalingan ng pagkain ng hayop. Paano nila mapapababa ang cost of production ng mga ito para makarating sa mga farmers ng mura? Or another alternative, importing yung mga produkto na kakailanganin ng baboy at manok pero for re-export lahat. So even Stephen, lahat ng farmers makikinabang kahit pumasok dito yung imported pwede tayo makakumpete. Yun po. Alang masasabi ko dyan. Thank you. Thank you, Yosek. Uh, now, uh, uh, Mr. Ordonez, uh, you yes. uh, recognize. Uh, thank you. I'm going to ask about market intelligence. Kulang na kulang na kulang ang market intelligence. And you know, whatever you do here, if your market intelligence is bad, it won't work. You want to help the small farmer? If your price is too low, you can't help if it's too low. So here's my recommendation, Madam Senator. You know, uh, the economists, they have this thing. I'm also an economist. If you bring down the price, the hogs will come in. So they're going from 35% to 5%. Now, if you bring the economists to the businessman like you, you ask the question, what if it is 30? What if it is 20? What if it is 5? It's called sensitivity analysis. Economists also do that. I do not know if they did that, but I already submitted a paper that did research. And Mr. Saw says, bring back 35. Okay, if he's wrong and they won't come in, what rate will they come in? For example, if there's a salesman, you give 20% more, he'll work more. 30% more, that's it. Why give 100%? Because if he's already doing his best at 30%, tama na yun. Ganito rin. Sa tariff rate, sinabi na namin, hindi kailangan bagsakan grabe ito. When you make it bagsak ka grabe, you know, whether it is 20% or 5%, they're gonna come in anyway. So give 20%. What's the reason? Number one, you don't kill the farmers. You're killing them with too low a price from imports. Number two, you get the money that Rosendo so says he needs. You know, my real anger is that there is no intelligence going on. They just say five. They do what you call sensitivity analysis. At what rate? And therefore, you cannot rely on curves. You must rely on surveys and market intelligence. So that's what I'm saying. You know, Madam Senator, it's nice to have the small farmer. If the price is too low, I don't care what you give him. He's going to lose money. So you got to give him something where he can compete. So in summary, 
My request is I want more market intelligence, more thorough work, not this standard thing, bring it down to 5% without looking at, what is it, at 30, 25, 20? Because for every 10%, it's 3 billion pesos away from the... Hindi ko alam yung 5% na... Wala akong alam na 5% na binaba. Nagtataka nga ako, hanapin ko yung 5% for the bone chicken. Alam ko lang na 5% opal. O, yung opal. And sinasabi ko, that is te, ano, conducive to technical smuggling. Eh. Kasi kung 5, I'm tapos sorry. 30. Oo. Wala akong yeah, alam na ibinaba nila sa 5%. Meron silang sinasabi na yung debone chicken. Hindi yun na no, napublish. I, I, I eh. the hugs. Uh, Madam Chair, I've sent... Ang alam namin binaba, hugs, nung nag-ESF, tapos nagre-recession tayo, binaba nila... Yung 30 to 10 for 3 months and then naging 15% after 3 months up to 1 year. Parang 10% 3 months and then uh, uh, 15% for 9 months tapos babalik na sa dati. Iyon ang pinag-usapan namin doon. Tapos yung isa, yun lang ang nalaman ko. Tapos yung outside MAV binabaan nila sa 20 Tapos magiging 25 after uh, 3 months and then babalik sa dati after 9 months. Yun lang ang alam ko na pinag-usapan sa Senate na ibababa ang tariff. But wala akong alam na binaba sa 5%. Sila yeah. may sinasabi sila na yun mechanically the bone chicken. Hindi ko nalaman yun. Kasi tingin ko executive order yun. Eh. Hindi, dumaan, hindi pinag-usapan sa Senado. Uh, th thank you. I was really relating it to hugs and what was happening. Because In fact, I when I saw that five percent sa opal, nung pa yon, ako hindi ako nag-agree doon eh, kasi kung five percent siya tapos yung iba thirty, magte technical smuggling yan. Oh. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I don't agree with that. Eh. Gusto ko mas malapit para kasi siyempre pag nag technical smuggling sila maglalagay sila eh kung hindi na worth it eh pa ano na nila yon di ba hindi ako nag-agree dun sa 5% of all na yun masyadong malayo yeah. dun sa regular tariff oh. so so my request is just more market intelligence more thorough yeah. thank you we'll, we'll study that that's why I'm asking PIDS ano recommendation nila sa tariff kasi kung sobra baba ng tariff ano naman pamimigay natin sa mga livestock farmer kung kaliit-liit ng tariff di ba kasi ang ginawa namin sa rice ang rice kasi Ang nakokolekta nila tariff on rice is a little less than 15 billion a year. Yung 10 billion pinigay namin sa mechanization at saka sa inbred seeds kasi yun ang problema ng rice, yung mechanization at inbred seeds kasi masyadong mataas ang labor cost so they have to mechanize, masyadong uh, mababa ang quality ng seeds kaya nagbigay kami ng inbred seeds uh, and then Naglagay kami sa training kasi kahit ka mo bigyan ng machine at bigyan mo na inbred seed, kung hindi mo naman sila train how to do it, wala rin. Naglagay kami sa training. Tapos, of course, regular yung magbibigay ka para sa loan, para may mautang sila sa DBP at saka land bank. And uh, yung in excess of 10 billion, yun yung ano, binigay na financial assistance to farmers owning 2 hectares and below. Para wala nang magreklamo na hindi wala silang financial assistance. So in effect, lahat ng tariff na 14 billion binigay sa rice farmers, sa small rice farmers. It's 5 hectares and below, pero yung financial assistance sa 2 hectares and below. Ngayon, kung hindi natin itatax ang ano, ang uh, uh, what you call this livestock, poultry and dairy. Ano pa mamimigay natin sa livestock? poultry and dairy farmers. Di ba? O, kaya tinatanong ko, magkano tax ang ire-recommend natin para may maipamigay tayo kasi that's the intent of the law to help kasi ang lit-lit ng budget nila sa agriculture, kung merong livestock competitiveness enhancement fund, may maipamimigay tayo. Livestock, poultry, and dairy. May pamimigay natin. Tapos isusulat natin kung kanino ibibigay specific agency para they are responsible for that kasi nakikita nga natin pag uh, general, 
hindi nakakarating. Pero pag specific, nakakarating siya doon sa beneficiary kasi specific ang mag, uh, ano, mag-i-implement. Oo. Alam naman natin ang problema eh kasi mahal ang feeds. Uh, walang ano eh. Walang panggagalingan ng... Ano, like ako, bumibili ako ng kalabaw. Mahirap bumili ng kalabaw pag magde-dairy farm ka. Mahirap daw bumili. Bibili ako, sabi nila, 50,000 ang isa. Oo. So, dapat merong nagpo-produce nung mabibili mong gano'n, di ba? Na reasonable ang amount, di ba? Dairy, uh, cattle, carabao, uh, ano, cow, carabao, at saka ano ba yung isa? Goat. Goat, chicken. Mahirap din maghanap ng ano eh, nung i-re-raise mo eh, kung hindi ikaw magre-raise mismo eh. So, so yun ang mga problema. And then of course, yung disease control, one of our major problems na hindi natin masol, disease control. So, yun ang mga things. At saka yung ano, yung processing. Para yung nagpo-produce, makaprocess na rin siya para mawala na yung middleman. Oh. And then yung ano yung ano tawag doon logistics. Oh, yun yung bibigyan natin ng budget na magkaroon tayo ng better logistics. Kaya tinatanong ko nga doon sa mga commercial, ano ba gusto niyo yung project na pwede naming ibigay sa inyo? Not, not necessarily financial assistance kasi hindi pa payag ang gobyerno na financial assistance sa mga commercial farmers, wedding project but not financial assistance. So. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very oh, much. Sige. So, are there more people who would want to talk? Yes. Uh, please introduce yourself. Oh. Good morning, Senator Villar. Yes. Si, si Rene Abad po ito sa Kamiling Cattlemen's Association. Okay. Bye. Comment lang ako dun sa presentation ng NEDA. Parang mm. uh, sa figures na sinabi nila, parang uh, hindi included ang mga backyard racers that uh, constitute the majority of the of all the livestock industries. So, uh, sana matignan nila. Baka mag-change yung uh, assumptions ng Republic Act kung ma-include talaga yung mga production for backyard racers at the same time pati yung mga production cost because yung mga backyard racers so mas mababa yung production cost nila kaysa sa commercial. Nandito pa ba yung NEDA? Kasi I don't think they did not include kasi yun ang ano ng law uh, to help yung backyard. <laughs> yun ang pinaka-importanting intent of the law. To help yung backyard. <laughs> oh, parang yung commercial is ano, talaga mas marami backyard farmers. Kaya, and uh, usually when we make a law, it's oriented towards the poor. Well, hindi ba yung sinali backyard farmers to sa inyong, ano, I'm sure kasali yun, di ba? Kasama po. Kasama. Oh, kasi sabi nila para daw hindi kasama. Actually, we'd like to thank the Senator na talagang yung uh, Republic Act na pre-nopose talagang uh, may kumikiling sa mga backyard uh, farmers. And also, gusto ko sanang tanungin, uh, Madam Senator, with the recent uh, Supreme Court decision sa Mandanas Garcia, Garcia petition, kung magkakaroon ba ng uh, parang uh, part ng Republic Act which will encourage or maybe require the LGUs para suportahan ng mga backyard racers because as you have said, almost a trillion pesos will go down to the LGUs. And hopefully, one trillion, uh, one trillion. 960 billion, I think that's the exact figure. Yes, ma'am. Almost uh, a trillion, almost a trillion. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Maybe we can request the inclusion onto the Republic Act, uh, encouraging or requiring the LGUs para gamitin yung uh, part of the additional funds that will go down to them. Alam nyo, 
Talagang one stock. of the ano ilalagay doon would be agriculture kasi munti mo babawasan mo ng budget ang national government saan nila babawasin yon I think it will be health education and agriculture yun yung tatlo na foremost na ibibigay sa local government because you know babawasan mo ng 1 trillion ng national government naturally <laughs> you you have to magbawas ka rin ng function kasi hindi nila maa-afford di ba So ililipat 'yun sa local government. Ang problema sa local government, nasa inyo na 'yang which local government you have. Kasi uh, from my observation, may mga local government mahilig sa agriculture. May local government mahilig sa infrastructure. Depende kung ano hilig ng local government niyo eh. Kasi doon nila bibigay yung emphasis. Merong mahilig sa education. So kung kayo eh, mga farmers Eh, i-elect, i-elect nyo yung local government official na mahilig sa agriculture. Kasi uh, that's the way to influence them to spend for agriculture. Kasi pag hindi nyo sila, hindi kayo naglabi sa kanila, kung ano gusto nilang gawin doon, yun ang mangyayari doon, di ba? Kahit mo ilagay sa batas, hindi naman necessarily susundin ang batas eh. O, yun ang problema eh. O. Kaya nga ako pag sumusulat ng batas very specific eh kasi miski ilagay mo sa batas kung hindi specific walang mangyayari. Yes ma'am, so, thank you ma'am. So, uh, ayung mga will... farmer, ang dami niyo naman eh di, be sure that you elect a uh, local government official na mahilig sa agriculture para so, yung pera nila dalhin sa agriculture, di ba? Oo. Sige. Yun lang ang advice ko sa inyo kasi ako na naandito rin ako nakatira rin ako sa isang bayan eh iba-iba hilig ng mga tao eh, ng mga local government eh uh, kanya-kanyang hilig yan eh so elect a local government uh, which is pro agriculture yes ma'am uh, we thank you very much dun sa as as far as the S, uh, republic uh, proposed uh, I, i read through it It, it uh, favors uh, a lot the small ta- uh, small farmers. Thank you, okay. Madam Senator. Okay, thank you. Okay, who else? Uh, yes, the one who raised your hand, PBDA. Uh, good good afternoon, Senator. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep, Vice But President. Uh, Bet Drugs Association. Yes. Drug yes. Association. Uh, and I'm joined today by our President, uh, Mr. Pipo Tupas, as well as our immediate. <clears throat> and current board director, Dr. Eugene Mende. We have a prepared statement, so I hope you don't mind if I just, uh, in a couple of minutes, just quickly read this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Philippine Vet Drugs Association is the vanguard of ethical industry leadership and professional integrity in the provision of safe veterinary and nutritional products for food safety and animal welfare. We are a recognized umbrella organization of major local and multinational companies operating in the country as manufacturers, importers, and distributors of vital animal health products and offering relevant professional services to all professional potential clients. At a general level, we fully support thrusts and objectives of these bills, which seek to streamline the regulation and development of the entire livestock value chain. Indeed, the value chain approach is something we have supported over the years and are glad to see the direction this committee is taking in this regard. We are equally thrilled with the fact that the Senate has recognized the importance of the often neglected livestock and poultry sector, a critical component of our country's food security aspirations. Veterinary drugs plays a crucial, though oftentimes unseen role in the livestock value chain. The drugs, medicines, and nutritional products our industry offers ensures a healthy and productive livestock sector through the reduction of animal lives lost due to disease, the increased production of quality animal protein products, and the maintenance of a healthy animal population, not just for food security, but also out of a genuine concern for the humane treatment of animals, otherwise known as animal welfare. Today, the Philippine veterinary drug sector has undergone major changes in the way we are regulated. While some of our products continue to be regulated by the Bureau of Animal Industry, such as feed additives, premixes, and nutritionals, Others have recently been handed over to the Food and Drug Administration, such as vaccines, diagnostic kits, medical devices, and the likes. This was the fruit of a number of laws being passed over time that eventually bunched veterinary drugs with human drugs, which falls under the jurisdiction of FDA. 
This has also become a major challenge of the industry being regulated by two different agencies with very different standards. FDA has more expertise in the area of products for human consumption, while BAE is, in the, country's, is the country's expert when it comes to animal health and welfare. In the course of this discussion, we hope the good committee will consider streamlining the regulation of veterinary drugs under the jurisdiction of BAE and or its successor organization, such as the Livestock Regulatory Office and the larger Philippine Livestock Authority as proposed in SB 139, due to its having subject matter expertise and focus on animal health and welfare among its mandates. Not only would it simplify regulatory application processes, it should also help in the management of costs associated with the compliance due to higher human health standards applied by FDA. We also note that another bill being discussed today proposes to establish a, in every province a diagnostic lab for livestock-related diseases. Similar to our earlier push to ensure the integration of the vet drugs industry within the ambit of the bills being discussed today, we strongly suggest expanding this great idea of not just creating diagnostic labs per province, but establishing vet centers instead, which not only seeks to diagnose livestock-related diseases, but also serves as a first line of defense and treatment where interventions are taken to deal with the animal disease on the ground and also regulating the products meant to deal with these diseases in the first place. This seems to be in keeping with the entire discussion today around streamlining the regulation, development, and governance of the entire livestock value chain. Ultimately, we imagine these proposed laws can go a long way, if passed, in achieving coordination across the livestock and poultry value chain, a good step towards enhancing our local food security, and hopefully improving the competitiveness of the entire sector and its affiliated industries. If the committee will allow, PVDA would like to have the opportunity to formally submit a position paper with more detail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you with submit that, the position have... paper because uh, we have to discuss that with FDA. Bakit nilipat sa FDA yung regulatory? Pumayag ba ang DA na ilipat yon? We We know that there are attempts to try to iron it out between DA and DOH, FDA. Um, trying to bring that back into BAE, but... Ano ba yun? Law ba yun or executive order? Yes, it's the food safety law, actually, uh, and the previous laws around the creation of FDA that kind of created this gray space, you know, this gray area. You know, and the uh, recent assertion of FDA to take these over has kind of disrupted the industry you know, <laughs> at a time that we're trying to deal with these animals. Can diseases. you give me the background of that change? So I will yes, know sir. because I, I, I didn't know about that. So give me a background, a write-up about what, when did it happen, how did it happen, and then who, what, what, it, what is it? Because uh, uh, the food safety law, general, yon, yung ba ang provide o ano lang yung yung it hindi. It goes back naman. sometime. Yeah, we'll provide the whole chronology. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Sige, sige. Para alam natin, para alam natin where to ano that. Oh, sige. Where to start that? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, can you introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, you can. Yes. Uh, Mr. Samaniego, proceed, Mr. Samaniego. So, uh, can you, yes. uh, you are this from is, where? Uh, this is Rick Samaniego from the Philippine Coalition of Consumer Welfare. Ah, okay. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Madam Chair, person, and your members of the Senate uh, in your committee. Dahil po sa sobrang sipag nyo sa paggawa ng batas para po sa ikabubuti ng consumer. Meron po akong manifestation na gustong basahin pero mahaba ho. Kaya gusto ko you can send continue. me that. Oh, you yes, can send okay. me that para mabasa okay. namin. Di ba? Send it to okay. our committee and I'll have a copy. Okay. Unang-una una po ma'am, uh, lubos po muli kami nagpapasalamat sa inyo dahil sa mga binigay niyong advice sa amin sa consumer na maging una, maging self-sufficient na magkaroon ng tanim sa bawat backyard na inyong minukahe kahit po last year. Na ginagawa na po ng mga membro natin, mga consumers, no? At napakalaking bagay nito. Ngayon po, ang Philippine Coalition of Consumer Welfare ay eh, focus po sa health, sa food, at saka sa nutrition. Sa ngayon po, ma'am, ang importante po kasi sa mga consumer, kagaya natin, is yung may mabiling kalidad, mura at available na na pagkain. Mm. Uh, Doon po sa mga pinisenta kanina, sa mga maaring nakikinig ngayon, 
uh, maaaring nalilito po sila sa mga data na pinipresent kasi pag consumer talaga ang gusto nila malaman lang kung meron sila mabibili. Ang problema ngayon, dahil po sa may pandemya, eh, wala na hong, di ho sa walang mabili. Wala na silang pambili. <laughs> dahil may mga pamilya, may mga pamilya ko. That's why I'm asking them to build vegetable garden para pag walang makain, di kainin, puro vegetable, eh, mas healthy pa yun, di ba? Ma- Kasi pag nag-lockdown, hindi naman natin masabi, pag sobra infection, hindi rin napasok. So, parang it's sometimes beyond our control. So, what is in our control is produce the food that we're going to eat. Eh, ano pinakamadaling i-produce? Eh, vegetable, di ba? Tatanim mo lang eh. O, oh, eh, namimigay naman kami ng seeds and fertilizer. So, wala naman problema doon. Kasi kung wala nang income, E eh, di magtanim na lang ng vegetable at kainin puro vegetable. Ako kaya ko mabuhay with vegetable eh. In fact, nowadays I only eat salad. <laughs> I don't eat anything anymore. <laughs> so, Ma'am, sa, sa kakakulit po nyo, talaga pinopromote nyo nito. Marami po nakikinabang sa member ng Philippine Coalition of Consumer Welfare. Nung una po, hesitant sila kasi sabi nila, ni seeds, wala silang makuha. Yeah. Nga mga, Sum- sumulat lang kayo meron. sa akin, marami akong oh, seeds. Oh. Binanggit ko po na marami tayong makukuha kay Ma'am Cynthia Villar kasi natira mm. na rin ako sa Las Piñas, dyan sa Kasindino. Oh. Eh, yun ay baho kasi yung mga membro namin, sa Cagayang Bali, lahat. Then, minemail na, namin, minemail namin, minemail namin. We're very oh. serious about our advocacy. We're mailing it. And yes. then, uh, Eh, lahat ng region meron akong composting facility para yung yes, bibili na fertilizer doon na lang manggali yes. kasi yun ang mabigat Ma- magaang lang yung seeds pero mabigat yung fertilizer so pag walang region na walang panggagalingan nagtatayo ako doon para may panggalingan ang ibibigay na fertilizer and enforcing the DA na mamigay sila ng composting facility in every town in the Philippines para sasabihin nila mahal ang fertilizer eh pwede naman gumawa ng sariling fertilizer eh ano ba mahal diba ayaw Yun lang po. nila oo oh, oh. po na natut- natuluan niyo po kami doon kaya nakakahingi po kami sa DA miski sa Munyo sa Nueva Ecija meron sila uh-huh. pero ngayon meron pa lang sa inyo pwede rin kami oh, sulat matuwa. lang kayo so email oh. O, oh, namimigay kami. Oh. That's our advocacy. Oh. Oh, ngayon, sa na, na, nabanggit nyo na uh, yung lumpukol sa feeds, ano, na note namin na sinabi ni Senator Kiko, nagbibiro raw siya, na sinabi niya na mas maganda pang negosyo ang feeds kaysa sa baboy. Totoo po yan eh. Kasi talaga po yung mga membro namin sa Philippine Coalition, mga farmer din, eh, oh. parang wala akong regulasyon sa pagtaas-taas po ng presyo ng mga feeds o abuno. Parang may may hindi ko mukha sa gamot. Nagpapasalamat kami kay Presidente Duterte. Nakapirma po siya ng Executive Order 155 noong December 17 na nabawasan pati po yung presyo nung sa mga COVID, sa diabetes. Eh mm. siguro po ang kailangan magkaroon din ng regulation at matignan yung bakit po napakamahal yan. Kaya muli ngayon po, umiiyak po mga consumers, marami po sumusulat sa Philippine Coalition na isang pamilya o maraming pamilya na dapat na sila hindi makalabas, humihingi ng bigas sa amin. Mm. E ngayon, ho, namungkahi ko din sa inyo at nasunod naman sandali na magikot siguro ng rolling story. Yung pang panahon ni Presidente na panahon pa ng ano no, yung actually, kadiwa rolling story. Actually, yung NFA, may 7 billion budget a year sila na para bumili ng uh, ano, ng uh, ng palay sa farmer at ipagbili nila sa mga local government ng mura. Kasi pag NFA, dapat mura. So, kasi hindi naman kaya ng NFA na mamigay ng detalyado kasi hindi naman, wala silang ability na ganun. I think ang pwedeng gumawa niyan would be bumili sa NFA yung local government at sila yung magbigay uh, sa ano mga tao. Oo. Oo. Kasi... Ay, Ako, pag may humihingi sa akin ng bigas, nabili rin ako sa NFA. Tapos, pinadadala nila dun sa ano. Kasi may mga branch sila sa iba-ibang region, but not in every town. Sa regions lang. Pinamimail nila dun sa region nila. Actually, in lang po ang importation ng NFA. Pero yung kanilang pamimili, 
yung 7 billion budget nila na andun pa rin intact that they can trade rice with that 7 billion budget. Oo. At hindi na yun bumabalik. Di ba pag trading, binibili sa'yo, tapos babalik ulit. Wala na, bumabalik sa gobyerno yun. Basta every year, may 7 billion sila. At yung overhead nila, may 4 billion budget sila sa overhead. Kaya hindi nila masasabi na nawalang power ang NFA. The budget remain. Yung importation lang ang tinanggal sa kanila kasi nag, ano tayo, rice tarification law. Oo. Yun lang. Po, ma'am, na na check nyo dahil kasi ang talaga naging problema dyan, if you recall, yung collusion ng NFA, some at NFA, saka ng cartel. Saka, saka oh, cartel. Yun ang tinanggal. Ah, yun ang tinanggal. Oh. Eh, hinihingan oh. pa minsan yung, miski sa pagbabayad ng uh, credit yung farmers ng check, eh, lalo na yung hindi naka-member sa isang credit union. Naayos na rin po namin yun. No? So, ma'am, uh, ngayon ho, uh, the problem really is uh, wala nang pambili, wala nang at maayos kasi, sana yung... Kaya sapin. ayaw nga natin ng lockdown kasi pag nag-lockdown, walang, walang mababawasan ng employment talaga kasi <laughs> sarado eh. Ano yeah. naman ipapaluwal na isang business na sarado? Yun ang problema. Kaya sabi nga, we have to live with the COVID, and avoid lockdown. Kasi pag lockdown, walang negosyo. Sino mag employ Yun ang problema. ba? So, Ikaw naman, kung may negosyo ka at lockdown ka, sarado, eh paano ka naman magbabayad ng employees? ba? Kaya siguro, ang ano talaga is magba- mag-ingat at magpa-vaccinate. ba? Tama po. Oh. Tapos huwag natin po... i-lockdown kasi pag ni-lockdown, pati employment nawawala. Yeah. Yes, tama po. So with regards naman po dun sa batas na nabanggit nyo, buti po ma'am nasabi nyo na pag gagawa ng batas, minsan hindi nasusunod o minsan hindi malab- malabo po ang interpretasyon. Kaya po nagkakagulo. No? Actually, yan po ma'am suportado ng Philippine Coalition of Consumer Welfare. Lahat po ng bills nyo. Pero lamang tutupo sa interpretation Lalo rin kahapon umikot po yung grupo namin sa Makati. Ang dami pong nakapila pa rin na sa DSWD, humihingi ng bigas, humihingi ng panghel. Sa Las Piñas, medyo konti sa ibang pasay. Ano? Kasi ma'am, ang sabi nila, eh, napakalaki po ng pondo ng gobyerno. Baka pwede man gcas away lang kami. No? <laughs> Kahit 200 pesos na pambigas. Eh, yun po talagang what's really ha- happening uh, sa, sa ground. Ano? Marami yung pamilya ngayon naka-lockdown. Kasi eh, ang kapo, di ba ang answer dyan is yung, ano, yung, you know, gini-gcash yun eh, yung, ano tawag dito, <laughs> yung, ano, yung four, four and a half million poor people, yung, ano tawag dun sa DS, yung, ano tawag? Uh, uh, sa uh, Pantawid Pamilya Program. Pantawid Pamilya Program. Yes, Pantawid Pamilya. Kasi dinitermine nila yung amount ng mahirap, tapos yun ang binibigyan talaga ng every 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 month ng GCash. Beyond that, unless uh, provided by law, katulad ngayon, pinirmahan lahat ng ng, uh, ng rice farmers to 2 hectares and below, may financial assistance galing sa gobyerno. Yung mga ganun ba? Pero palagi nila mapapansin nyo, pinipili nila yung pinakamahirap. Diba? Yeah. Hindi pwede ipamigay sa middle class. Doon talaga sa poor. Oh, tapos itong Sigur. aming bill na to, lalagyan din namin ng ganun. Kasi yung kerekto is asking for financial assistance. Siguro, yeah. mag- mag- de- parang yung sa RISE, nag-determine ng tariff, ang nakolekta, 14 billion, 10 billion ang nilagay namin sa batas. Tapos na, nag-provide na anything beyond 10 billion, ipamimigay to small farmers. Yung ganun lang, ganun magagawa natin kasi... Ganon talaga how the government operates. Ngayon, kung mayaman ng LGU na kaya niya mabi- mamigay on their own, yun, namimigay sila. Oo. Yun po. Kaya kahit po bigas, ah. kaya nga yung kumpanya, naririnig ng mga consumers na nakapila doon. Sabi, ang help is on the way. But where is it? Nandito na kami ngayon. Pipila pa kami. Wala na kong social distancing. Hindi ko namin kinunan. Ano? Kasi... Awang-awa talaga kami. Saan namin pukuha ngayon na makakain lang namin ngayon? Kasi yung pamilya ko nandun sa ano. So, na uh, awa ko kami ma'am. Wala ko kami limited ng pondo namin sa Philippine Coalition. Ikaya. Ikaya. Nag-GGCast kami ma'am. Uh, GGCast namin 100. 
But come to think of it, makikita natin yung mga unused fund na mga halimbawa sa gobyerno, sa DOH na sinosole na marami naman savings kasi nagka-pandemia, hindi nagamit yung traveling allowance, seminar, and so forth. So, and then naririnig din lang ating mahal na presidente noon na pure intention, yung mga senior citizens dyan, kung saan kayo abutan ng pandemia, dyan lang kayo, huwag kayo alis kay voters kayo o hindi para madalang kayo ng sarili niyong ayuda. But truth in matter, ma'am, hindi po nasusunod on the ground yun kasi pumipila sila, kaya nagkakahawahan. Sa interview namin sa mga emergency hospitals, ang sabi ng doktor, again, this is reality on the ground. Kaya raw kung dumami ma'am ang may sakit na Omicron, yun yung mga nakaramdam lang ng flu, that was all colds, tatakbo sa emergency, Mahalo dun sa, sa may Omicron. Nagkakaroon na ng Omicron. But truth in fact, ngayon po talaga isa, flu season. So pagka meron kang cold and cup, eh... Oh, Nagtatakot ka na eh. Akala mo Omicron eh. <laughs> Ako rin <laughs> eh. Oo. Oh, oh. Oo. Oh, eh, you know, kami, apat po ang miyembro ng pamilya ko na down ngayon sa, sa, sa Omicron. Omicron. Na yan, ano. Ang problema po, hindi rin ma-distinguish kasi kung if it is Omicron or Delta. Pag Delta, ho, atake talaga yung lungs. Pag masyadong heavy, whooping, o dog cup kayo, eh that is Delta. Eh, delikado yun. Pero simple flu, uh, colds, oh, and Omicron. light cup, that's Omicron. Omicron. Eh, eh, hindi yung ma-detect kasi ngayon, ma'am. Mahihirapan ka, pupunta ka pa sa Philippine ge- ge- Genome. Oh. Anyway, this okay. is already health. <laughs> this is already oh. health. Ma'am, again, okay. ma'am, uh, sinusuport, sinus, sinusuport ano, ng Philippine Coalition. Lahat ng efforts niyo dyan, ma'am, sa, uh-huh. sa Philippine Agriculture and SINC, Senator Kiko Recto. And muli po na dito po ang Philippine Coalition of Consumer of Welfare na magre-report sa inyo what's really happening on the ground. And we'll be submitting uh, position papers. Okay. And request kami ng seeds sa inyo, mga seeds. Yeah, 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 no problem. Uh, Kaya, okay. Yung number one kayo, number one kayo sa amin. Salamat po. Thank you. Uh, God bless. At uh, buhay pa tayo lahat. <laughs> Salamat okay. po. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, wala na. Okay na tayo. Ha? Oh, um, Attorney Lina. Oh, yes. I'm from I'm chair from the Cooperative, Cooperative Development Authority. Oh yeah, we always uh, we all we are always supportive of you. Lahat ng amin bill meron para sa cooperative development authority para mag-produce kayo ng mag-organize uh, ng kayo ng cooperative sa agriculture nang sa ganon maging ano sila magkaroon sila na economies of scale kasi pag uh, Alam nyo, yung pinadistribute na lupa, eh, one hectare, eh, hindi economy of scale yung Kailangan maging cooperative sila, mga 100 man lang, magsama-sama. Tapos, kasi pag cooperative, mabibigyan natin ng tulong in terms of machines, in terms of uh, what you call this processing machine, tsaka yung machines in agriculture, mabibigyan natin ng tulong sa iba't ibang bagay. Kasi we cannot give individually, we can only give in co-op, as a cooperative pag mas malalaki ang ibibigay, di ba? That's why we're always supportive of the Cooperative Maraming, Development salam. Authority na kayo ang mag-organize ng cooperative, especially sa ano, kakaunti ang cooperative sa coconut. Yes, ma'am. Price uh, marami, pero sa coconut parang ano, kakaunti. Ay wala po sa po. Uh, ano sa livestock ko maraming cooperative. Alam ko may mga malalaking cooperative ka at sulat ng soro-soro ibaba. Ano malaking cooperative 'yun ng mga livestock farmer. Okay. 'Yun lang ang kilala ko malaking cooperative ng rice farm ng livestock farmer. So don't okay. worry. We're, we're always you are always in our hearts. <laughs> Kasi Ang kayo lang ang, ang solution towards economies of scale, cooperative. So, sige. Makakita po namin sa mga bills na nakalahad ngayon ang pagmamahal ninyo sa kooperatiba. Maraming maraming hmm. salamat po mula po sa amin, hmm. Chairman, Chairman and Kao. Okay. Ah, siguro ma'am, ang gagawin na lang po namin for uh, doon sa terminology ma'am, magkakaroon lang po kami ng uh, proposals 
Kasi mm. agricultural cooperatives po itong pinag-usapan natin mm. na masynchronized lang po sa 9520, yung mga terminology lamang naman po. Okay, At, uh, sige. Inclusion ng CDA po sa mga ahensya na pwedeng pagkunan ng technical assistance and other forms of assistance. Uh, tutulong ko sa future uh, PLA po kung uh, matutuloy po siya. So, okay. Maraming maraming salamat ma'am at magandang okay. umaga po. Okay. So, Madam Sir, ni Lina, yes? Madam Sir, before we finally end this uh, hearing, may be allowed to read the names of those who yeah. came in later. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Go uh, ahead, please. Um, yes, uh, Miss April de Guzman of the Department of Agriculture. Uh, Dr. Anisito Orbeta Jr. of the PIDS, uh, Vivian Ilarina of the Philippine Statistics Authority, uh, Dr. Baguio Sinan Baguio of the Picard, Ms. Uh, Maria Linda Andrade of the TESDA, Mr. Francis Penaflor of the uh, Board of Investments, uh, Ms. Lorena Lubarbio of the DTI, Attorney Ron Michael Uy of the BIR, Bureau of Internal Revenue, uh, Ms. Jesus Sabato of the Department of Finance, uh, Mr. Alexander Matosa of the Department of Finance as well, Ms. Tanya Rial of the Department of, F of Finance again, uh, Mr. Ilcid Pangilinan, uh, the Senior Vice President of uh, Land Bank, then Ms. Maria Melissa Bernardo also of Land Bank, and uh, Mr. Nicole Andrio Santos, Land Bank as well. Then from the police, uh, from our police, uh, uh, General Alan Dublesa and uh, uh, Engineer Arnold De Mesa, also from the Department of Agriculture. Uh, Mr. Tim Timothy Kadai from the Agricultural Training Institute. Uh, Filmic, Engineer Aldrin Badua. Uh, Dr. Evelyn Fernando from the Bureau of Soils and Water Management, Department of Agriculture. Uh, Hazel Mendoza from the uh, Commission of Higher Education. Um, earlier, Attorney Elias Inchong, uh, spoke of, uh, of, the, of the position organization, St Stephen Chua of the Philippine Amalgamated Supermarket Association uh, earlier, Ernest Ordonez also, uh, Nelson Lim C uh, of uh, Hayton Import Export in Valenzuela City, uh, Mr. Rodolfo Haviliana from the United Filipino Consumers Commuters, Mr. Ms. Bernadette Balamban from the PSA as well, and finally, Mr. Arkanghel Nape from the Toll Regulatory Board. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And with that, uh, we end uh, uh, this discussion. Thank you for joining us. We will give you an update on the development of the draft bill once the views and opinions on the suggestions have been consolidated. Stay safe and God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Senator. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator.